and everybody else is now pulling up, which means seriousness is improving. I have covered all this. I had also covered last time Field Marshal Maniksha with you. Now, I had promised you that I'll be touching on the military icons that you had all, all always wanted. I'll cover the next gentleman, Captain Mullah. Now, Captain Mullah was in charge of a ship, INS Kukri. And the, there were three ships which were involved in anti-submarine operations. Pakistan naval ship Hangur was the submarine which was located close to our coast. So these three ships went to surround it. And at that period of time, PNS Hangur, that is Pakistan naval ship Hangur, fired a torpedo at the INS Kukri. Now, it is this time that the ship was hit with the torpedo. It was hit so badly that it started sinking. But very beautiful thing is Captain Mullah did not, you know, look after his safety, but he was looking at everybody's safety. He started uh, issuing orders for lifeboats, rafts, boys. He got maximum people out and saved their lives. But in, in return, he continued to stand on the ship's deck till he went down with it. This is the quality of military leaders we have in our country. You know, Marshal of the Air Force, he's a legend. His name is Arjun Singh. He was born in 1919. And just in 19 years of age, he went for our Royal uh, Air Force College Cramble, which is their training college for all pilots. You know, he stood first over there and he's one of the first few who has done long distance swimming and held national record for the same. After topping the course at RAF Cranwell, he was posted to Kohat. Anybody who knows where is Kohat? Kohat is a northwestern frontier promise, uh, province of Pakistan. And this is the place where there's a lot of, even now, a lot of trouble there. If you see all the uh, trouble in Afghanistan originates from Northwestern fr Frontier Province. It has tribals. And there was that time a tribal leader who had created havoc. He was known as Fakir. And he was troubling the Britishers. This is the time when World War II started. Now, he was flying at that time on Wapiti aircraft and posted at Kohat when one of the Br British uh, companies or garrisons got under attack from the tribals. They asked for air support. He got airborne with his colleague, Gulam Ali, who was the gunner. And then they went and started strafing the tribals. They were able to inflict a lot of casualties on the tribals. And at that period of time, the tribals were firing back at him. The aircraft used to be very slow and low. And therefore, Marshall's aircraft got hit. When it got hit, the engine also went off. And he went and landed in a riverbed, right in the middle of where the fight was taking place. One side were the tribals. Pathans and the other side were the British army, which is actually Indian army. A lot of Indian soldiers were there. And he was in the middle. Now, Gulam Ali, his gunner, started running towards the Pathans. He got disoriented. He ran after him for a few hundred hours. There were a large number of bullets fired at him. He picked him up, turned him around towards the British side and forced him to run towards the British side. You know, he became such a loyalist thereafter of him. But this is the quality of great leaders, you know. They don't worry for their safety. They will always protect their men who are under them. But this is one quality which is lacking in all leaders today. I, I have yet to meet a few leaders, except I personally feel my own leader, Dayaji, who's a great uh, person who always looks after my interest. But I have seen very few such leaders who are looking after the interest of their own personnel, even at the cost of their life. Now, he, you know, he was in Kohat where the action was less and the Japanese were invading in 1943-44 in uh, Arakan region in Northeast. So he requested the Marshal uh, Claude, who had come there, Field Marshal Claude, that I want to go to the scene of action. Now he had started flying hurricanes. They were moved to, to Imphal. Imphal is in Northeast of India, very close to the Burma border. And that is the last airstrip where, from where you can attack the Japanese in Burma. So he, he started with operations. They used to fly 400 to 500 sorties a month. Continuously, he used to lead from the front. Many times, they hit, bullets were hits on them. A large number of the pilots died. In fact, out of 25 pilots, 12 died. And Marshall was always leading from the front in the sorties. And they created such havoc 
in the three divisions of Japanese that they were forced to stop their advance. But there was one division which had come very close to the British division at Imphal. Now, one of the days when he was returning back from his mission with a badly bruised aircraft, when he found that the Japanese were moving in large numbers and vehicles towards the divisional headquarter of the British, which meant actually Indian soldiers only. Now, when he, when he saw that happen, he reported it, immediately landed, got his entire squadron back in air in half an hour, went and attacked them. When they were just 10 kilometers from the district head, division headquarters, had they captured that division headquarters, Northeast would have gone. So this was the turning point of the war. He went himself, led from the front, destroyed large number of Japanese vehicles, ammunition and uh, soldiers. And the Japanese had to withdraw from there. The Japanese divisional commander was removed after this action. And can you believe it? Loud Lord, who is this gentleman who's on the screen? Lord Mountbatten. Mountbatten, yeah. Absolutely. Lord Mountbatten flew down to Imphal and awarded him DFC, Distinguished Flying Cross. And you can see the airfield of that time, you know, hardly anything over there when they used to fly. And they were flying against the best fighters in the world, Zero Fighters and Mitsubishi Bombers. Yet they were never scared of giving up their lives. Nine pilots got DFC out of that 25 pilots. That was the, and that happened not because they wanted to be very courageous. It's because the leader led from the front and he was courageous. His vision was correct. His implementation ability was beautiful and people followed him. People believed in him and followed him. Now, in, in 1964, he became the chief of air staff. India got independent, he became chief of air staff. In 1965, if you remember, Operational Gibraltar in Kutch and then uh, Kashmir, they had dropped a lot of uh, uh, Mujahids. Remember that? I don't know how many remember it, but India was on the verge of losing Kashmir when a strike, can you see my cursor, took place by two armor regiments. In August, 7th August 1945, and there was hardly any defense here. And can you see where I'm pointing now? This is Jammu. Can you see the cursor? Yeah. Then this is Akhnur. And here is Kashmir on top, Srinagar. Had, and this is that narrow chicken neck of India. If this had gone, we would have lost all links with Kashmir. And that was the idea of of uh, Pakistan army. This is the time the uh, Swaran Singh was the defense minister. He called him and the army chief. Army chief said, I want urgent air support. My people cannot reach there. There are hardly any number. They will soon capture Aknur. And Aknur is here. See how close Aknur is from Chamjuria. This is the time he said within one hour and true to a word of a visionary leader, within one hour, four of our aircraft Mr. Vampires got airborne. Three got shot down by Pakistani sabers. Because sabers were supposed to be a class apart. 104 fighters were supposed to be a class apart. Star Fighter 104. I don't know who all know about that. And these were the aircraft that got airborne in front of them, which are World War II aircraft. So three aircraft out of the four got shot down. But they continued to fly. 28 sorties were flown. 13 tanks were destroyed. 62 vehicles were destroyed. Two guns were destroyed. And Pakistani armor came to a standstill. They were so demoralized that Indian army could quickly move reinforcements here and they could also start a new front at Lahore and the history was thereafter done. But losing three aircraft meant that he still wanted to do something great. He's quickly, flexibly changed, moved Nats. Can you see this aircraft? This is Nat. This one is Nat, the one that I'm showing. These were like machar, you know, in front of the Pakistani sabers and uh, uh, F-104 star fighters. So moment he moved Nat, Nat there were Keeler brothers. Trevor Keeler and his brother Keeler, another Keeler. They shot, first Nat was shot, was, first saber was shot down, as you can see. And thereafter, the other saber was shot down next day by Patania. Then by many people, Nabe, Nabe also shot down a saber. And you can see the shots of our Nat shooting down saber and they were came to be known as saber slayers. Look at this general, you know, field marshal. He was that time uh, air chief marshal. Look at him. He had so much of vision and he had so much of flexibility. If he has made a mistake, quickly changed, launched his forces again with, with the aircraft which could take on the sabers and therefore the history was written from then on. And Pakistanis, if he had continued the war for one more week, that's the time they asked for Russian intervention 
and uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri had to go to Moscow. But had had we not had had we had one more week, Pakistan would have been finished at that period. There was no nuclear bomb with them, no atom bomb. See what the Pakistani commander chief had to say. Take Aknur, taking Aknur had become a difficult proposition after India used its air force in the Chamjuria sector. And look at the army vice chief he had said that it was because army successes were due to air support. But this is the kind of traits that leaders have. First, lead from the front. Don't hide behind your men. Lead from the front. If you take risk, your men will take risk. I'm assured you they will give their lives for you. Then second is have the ability to predict what is likely to happen in future. Be flexible to change, to adapt, uh, adapt yourself to changing circumstances. Change your plans if they are not working in one way. Make your goal is not to be let off, but your mission has to be achieved. He was a strategic analyst and an implementer. A lot of people in India are like Paan Ki Dukan. You go there, they'll keep talking, talking, talking. But when it comes to doing something, you will find nobody, no, no, no leader is in front to do it. Remember I showed you the video of one small child lifting that tree. That is what we require leaders today, you know. And honesty and fairness. They don't have their my boys. They always are fair to quality. And they love their subordinates. And they are willing to stand in front of their subordinates and care for them. That's why their subordinates always give them for their life. Now, we also have one such leader with us, C.A. Dayanivas Sharmaji. And I'm telling you, I'm greatly privileged to be working with him. He leads from the front. He protects my back many times when a lot of people would have stabbed it. And he always tells me, well, karte ro, kyu chinta kar rahe ho? Main aapke saath hu. Now, where do you get such leaders today? And I was telling you before also that there are very few leaders like him. And I feel that abhi picture to baki hai, but I feel that people like him are the ones who should be one day. It is my opinion. I don't want to uh, prejudice anybody's mind, but it is my opinion that he should be the president of IICI one day. I want to see you there, sir. I want to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Bell, sir. So may I request you, sir, that if you could... Uh, and I request everybody to put on their videos. May I request you, sir, to give it us as always. Sure, uh, Belsab, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, today, I've come uh, with a different thought in mind. I was just thinking what I should do and what I should speak. And uh, then comes a thought that striving for success is always a Thing which we all have actually thought about success is something which we have seen in the last and the path which we walk in are totally different so i thought Lord, let me just make it little filmy uh, i think all of you will enjoy the time and might be uh, we will share some things on personal note might be a couple of you can talk on certain things and uh, give your opinions but I made it a little filmy rather than making it, uh, you know, more professional. Jaisa Bhail Saab ka action-oriented movie to hai nahi mere paas. He actually uh, took you through the entire, uh, uh, you know, military base and the Air Force base, uh, Air Force base and uh, the way the things are. Bhail Saab, thank you very much, uh, you know, for uh, inviting me. I am really delighted to come and share my views today. Uh, and most importantly, uh, you know, uh, there is little different I have done. So you might like it, you might not like it, but I think you will like it still. Uh, you will not like it, so So let me just start sharing. If you yes, are permitted, I, I am permitted. Uh, can yes, you just yes. make uh, my other uh, yes, uh, I'll, I'll so file? Yes, yeah. Yes. So sir. Thoda sa interesting karte hai, aise hi maje mein, uh, rather than making it because the sessions are going to be very technical and all. So I thought a little different if we make it. Uh, the other one, uh, Belsa. Yes, there is yes. one more. Uh, yeah. You want uh, the others? There is only one photo of mine which is there. Yes, 
what do you want sir what do you want to be done uh if you can switch on this screen uh, uh if you enable. can switch on this screen uh enable you can switch on this screen uh enable Dr. Bell, this is Srivat sir. Uh, Daya sir has signed in two times. You have made one of those profiles the host. He wants the other profile also to be made a co-host. Okay, great. Done, sir. Done, sir. Daya sir, okay. done. So. I am just presenting a quick thing before you all. The full screen come. Yes, we can scripting our future. Scripting our future is something which I wanted to talk today, and uh, some journey which I have walked through. and most of you might have gone to undoubtedly there are many senior members who are there and uh, you know uh, the learnings have been very interesting all throughout life at least in the age of 44 i have come across uh, you know scripting our own future matters a lot means striving for success but one thing which i would like to say is uh, which taught me in this profession was uh, you know fail first you will enjoy the taste of success because you all know chartered accountants uh, very rarely it happens that you know we are actually uh, uh, oh my god sorry is it uh, the connection is gone i believe one second just a moment so fail first just a second there is some problem with the net i uh, hope uh, it is visible right yeah so uh, yeah so i am just making it little interesting by uh, sharing certain thoughts uh, with some interesting filmy dialogues rather than uh, you know making it more of a subject oriented and all mai udna chahta hu दौड़ना चाहता हूं गिरना भी चाहता हूं बस रुकना नहीं चाहता दिस इज अ ब्यूटीफुल डायलॉग विच इज कम फ्रॉम द मूवी कॉल्ड ये जवानी है दीवानी एंड यू नो व्हेन वी एक्चुअली पास यू नो वॉक थ्रू दिस एंटायर जर्नी वी फॉल डाउन वी फेल फील डिस्करेज समाइम वी फील मोटिवेटेड बट सम पीपल स्टे बैक एंड दे से अरे पैर में मार लग गई देर समथिंग विच इज गॉन रॉन्ग सो लेट मी नॉट ट्राई फॉर इट but if you see this dialect particularly which is there main udna chahta hu daudna chahta hu girna bhi chahta hu bas rukna nahi chahta i think this is something which actually takes us to a success uh, model which you and i want to always dream about and the most important thing is if you don't stop you will continue to work on there is one more thing which i thought uh, you know when we talk about what all we need to discuss there is a three idiot dialogue which has actually come out which is success ke piche mat bhago kabil bano kabil kamyabi sali jhak maar kar piche aayegi i think this is where most of the people have been actually making a mistake we are running behind success actually success is within us we need to ensure that you know all all things have to be kept open in mind and whatever the failures have come across we should not stop believe me when uh, bail sahab and i were trying to make this course active and even today even today he is actually a, a right example for me to talk about you know when we wanted to recruit people one after another we recruited people left recruited people left recruited people left or might be there was delay there was some kind of issue which was there but what we thought was only that you know we need to make this program a successful program rather than just holding it back success to aane ki hai all you people actually contributed to the entire learning experience where we have gone through primarily the concept of believing in self was something which was very important if you see this mohammed ali's 
uh, you know statement which is very interesting it talks to be great champion you must believe you are the best if you are not pretend you are because the self realizations actually make us to go to a different level the moment i stop believing in myself entire world will stop for me no one can actually come and help me out the point was very simple i had a determination that we have to make this program a successful one and it was basically i was pretending it was successful fortunately behel sahab who is an army man who has joined me and we actually made it a successful because i was at least pretending before the council before the people that you know we need to make this big happen you will not believe when i started my practice as a one man i took 6 months to do an assessment of my firm where i would like to look and uh, look myself to be and frankly the fact was today where i am you know i'll share with you something very personal if you permit me i used to drop i used to not even get ready i was not even having an office in 2005 i used to even uh, just start my bike drop my uh, wife to her office and uh, come back home and evening again go back to pick her up and i you not believe i always used to tell my wife that you know look one day we'll have an office like this and it's not too far of reality and today the kind of office we have is i i feel proud about myself that you know we could do it but only thing is if i believe in myself that is only possible otherwise it is not possible the most important part is be proud of who you are be proud of, of who you are there is a beautiful dialogue which is of movie guru which says jab log tumhare khilaf bolne lage samajh lo tarakki kar rahe ho that means don't bother about people what they are saying be proud about whatever self belief and be proud about of what you want to do and continue to believe in yourself and continue to do what you are doing there are people more than people who appreciate you people will be there to actually pull you back and say that you know you are not possible this is what is and my father taught one thing in your absence make people feel your presence that is what i mean by saying is very simple when you are not oh, present in a crowd today sometime back only i came to know mm-hmm. so sorry i was been told by my father in your absence your presence should be felt when you are standing you are not in the crowd when crowd crowd talks about you that means you are actually a man with lot of vision and thoughts in the people's mind rather than your own mind right jab log tumhare khilaf bolne lage don't worry about it that means people have started talking about you that means people are actually watching you that means people have stopped thinking about themselves they started thinking about you which is the biggest point of success which is there most important part is don't stop dreaming friends this is something which i would like to tell each one in a very simple way this is a badmash company dialogue which is there which talk bade se bade business paise se nahi ek bade idea pe se bade hote hain means entire business entire way we look at is not on money alone there are so many startups who have become unicorns in this country and there are so many single individuals who have come from different cities villages town and they have become cfo ceos you know a big practicing firm and all this could actually happen because they had a right idea and right thought process in their mind and they moved things with that spirit in the entire frame of mind because they always thought whatever i am thinking i am thinking big that makes whole lot of difference and the most important dreaming itself is not sufficient you need to work hard for this we all know but i am just putting it very simply with some dialogues of movies only for one reason that you know when we we come across of so many movies you know uh, um, uh, what do you say tv programs we go through but we miss out on this simple messages which actually drives us every time now let us take that example of working hard life mein sabse bada risk hota hai kabhi na risk rena people who don't take risk in life and they don't work hard for that 
aim and dream what they have believed in you are different only because you are dreaming different otherwise it is a common platform for everyone and they can uh, walk anywhere where it is required and more importantly never give up this is a beautiful dialogue of a movie called chichore सक्सेस से आ, के बाद का प्लान सब सबके पास है लेकिन अगर गलती से फेल हो गए तो फेलियर से कैसे डील करना कोई बता ही नहीं करना चाहता मींस यू आर एक्चुअली टॉकिंग अबाउट ओनली सक्सेस बट इफ यू थिंक अबाउट इफ इट गोज रॉन्ग व्हाट इज दैट आई नीड टू प्रिपेयर फॉर ये समथिंग विच वी नीड टू बिलीव इन आई जस्ट टेल यू वन सिंपल एग्जाम्पल हाउ आई स्ट्रेटेजाइज माई फॉर्म when i did it in 2005 i made a mind very clear that you know i should be unique i should be unique what it means is if everyone is providing statutory audit tax audit gst audit this audit that audit and everything what is unique in me then then we have evaluated uh, with my friend that what is not there in the market let us create that something big and we have become the first firm in the country in the age of 3 years to make an international tie up and move forward so my point is never give up might be will get failures we failed a lot in the entire process this is something which i would like to listen from uh, bahel sahab voice it will be a great feeling bahel sahab if you can just come and read that line i'll be really grateful for you kashti lehron se takrai gi to hi kinare naseeb honge yes पॉइंट Till the time, yeah, the water comes, hits again and again, again and again, again and again. Then only you will reach the destinations. That is something which we need to really feel. Hardship, tough times, success, failures, continuous failures will also make you successful. Only it will reach the end. Only if you are continuously working towards it, continuously believe in yourself, continuously work, continuously work. you will actually receive receive a success 100% you will get it then think positively never hate right jung which is rust hathiyaron ko lagti hai iradon ko nahi if you think that you can do it you can achieve it the rusting is only for equipments and you know items but not for your thoughts so friends what i would like to say is don't stop at one point in time not let our mind get rusted there is a beautiful movie which is there which talks about how do you revive yourself and move forward in that good spirit even one more uh, serial which i have saw, uh, seen jeet ki zid jeet ki zid a person who has actually been a soldier in uri and he got shot below his uh, belt level and he was paralytic and how he actually rose back was his thought process and energy which is took to a different level and today he is again back in the army so friends uh, what i would like to say is uh, you know by sharing this thoughts is not different but the fact is you all have participated you all have moved forward to take something new and different in this entire group there are different set of people from different age groups and the most important part is the kind of learning we are going through because we are carving to learn something new we are carving for what is basically what is that something different which i can learn in one spark and that one spark will actually take us to a total different level friends you know this management development program which is been made out for each one of you you have invested money you are investing every day your time every time you are learning something new the interactions which is we have created among the small small groups which are gone through is actually adding value sometime you feel it is cringe why is he asking that question but sometime if you sit back and relax and realize you will actually feel one thing that what that person was asking or discussing is more relevant because i also don't have answer for it. 
so the senior most person also understand from that point of view that you know a junior guy is training us or asking certain question which is tinkering our thoughts to move forward in life every day we are getting something new and different and one thing which i would like to say is with you all people when i am here i just come you might not notice sometime that i enter sometime listen to the discussion and exit not because of anything if i learn two different line from a learned speaker it makes whole lot of difference we have been walking through our life and only thing is the people who have been successful are those people who never withheld themselves they never dropped an idea which they initiated and they have never stopped when they failed mai unna chahta hu that is the message which is there mai girna chahta hu ye bhi ek message hai but i don't want to stop in my entire journey of success so friends i just came uh, to share with you some thoughts here and there tidbits nothing more it's basically just to uh, you know be with you and share certain thoughts that was only logic with this bell sab over to you thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to be here i hope i am within my timeline you're well within your time sir if you, if it was a classroom i would have said standing ovation <laughs> it's not a classroom so at least we can all clap lovely so brilliant i mean uh, such a motivating talk and how you use the movie examples to exemplify the leadership goals and leadership traits phenomenal mere mai bhi nahi kar pata sir as a brilliant one <laughs> बिगेस्ट actually a teacher in more than one ways if you start watching that with all the dialects which are rightly framed so that's the only message which i wanted to share with you all thank you very much sir thank you very much now we have the privilege of inviting sri vats kadaba ji he is known as sri to his friends so he told me on the first day please call me sri and uh, he is a people and performance transformation expert He has 18 years of people development, 25,000 hours of training, coaching, and consulting. He is an entrepreneur as well as being an employee. He is adept at training multicultural groups. I mean, he has trained people from India, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, China, Philippines, Hong Kong, Egypt, Poland, UK, USA, and sometimes together. He is a certified Ken Blanchard facilitator for situational leadership. Myers Briggs type indicator, MBTI indicator expert, DISC, MSc honors, maths from Bits Pilani, BE in civil engineering from Bits Pilani. He specializes specializes in strategic visioning, leadership development, relationship management, performance consulting, and culture transformation. I don't want to stand between you and him. May I request you, Sri Ji, to please come up. You are a co-host. To take it on. thank you thank you very much sir um everybody just a quick dig, uh, disclaimer uh, i had to uh, twist bahel sahab's arm um, i had to bribe somebody else to write something that would look remotely impressive and requested bahel sahab to read that out um i am a person who views myself as curious about human nature and a storyteller of mistakes predominantly my own mistakes and those of others to help others learn yeah um that's about me uh the session we are doing today is going to be nowhere as action packed and adrenaline pumping as dr behel's opening sessions every week and neither as inspiring or filmy as uh, dayaji's right um but my hope is that we can engender a discussion where all of us take at least one or two things away a couple of housekeeping things my request is you stay on mute but that does not mean you have to rely only on the chat box um it is common for us to forget you know when we take ourselves off mute it's common to forget to put ourselves back on mute 
So if you're not already aware of this shortcut, you just press the space button, the space bar on your laptop, and uh, it'll temporarily unmute you so you can speak and then leave it and you'll go back on mute automatically. Yeah, that's just a hygiene thing. <coughs> A couple of other things. Let me start sharing my screen and we'll take it from there. Once I learned from Dr. Behel about what he was looking for to add into this program, we, through our discussions, catalyzed this title of Leading with the North Star. So to quickly begin discussions, please help me understand what your take is about how we use the North Star. What is the North Star? Why is it important to us? Is it important to us at all? <coughs> direct. So give a direction. To give direction, okay. Position remains stable. Ah, that was an interesting comment. What does that mean, direction remains stable? The North Star position always at the same side or same. <coughs> as opposed to? Uh, as opposed to the other stars and planets which keeps on moving. So North Star remains the same. Okay, very valid. Uh, there's another thing, you know, the most common instrument used to establish direction is a compass. So why do we need a star? North is always on the top. Directing towards top. Yes, very good. Anything else? I don't know how many of you Stability. have traveled. Sorry? Stability can uh, sustain. Hey. Well, from everywhere. Fantastic point. Someone talked about sustaining. What does that mean? Talk to me a little bit more about that, please. Uh, you can lose a compass, but never a star. You can use compass, but you cannot use star, is it? No, no, I said you can lose a compass, but you can never lose a star. You can yeah, lose exactly. the compass, yeah. The star is never going to go out of there. So it's a tool, right? Uh, compass is a tool, right? It's not always with you. A star is a natural, it's always with you. Very good, very good, very good. Sustainability, I mean, uh, it can uh, weather the uh, storm and it can uh, be itself. It can, uh, uh, it can self motivated or it it will it will not be uh, easily carried away or something like that beautiful beautiful who is that speaking compass needs a point elegantan sir thank you elegantan ji gurpri ji continue please compass also needs a point to start exactly ah okay so i don't know how many of you travel to places like canada or alaska or something like that but the further north you go i haven't traveled towards the south pole but the further north you go, your compass becomes a little unreliable. Any idea why? Because of magnetic. Due to magnetism. Exactly. Change in magnetism. magnetism. The compass relies on the magnetic field of the earth. And when you get to points where that is getting distorted, the very instruments that are supposed to show you direction can mislead you. Yeah, I don't know how many of you read that uh, um, uh, news article of uh, a man getting caught in, I think, minus 38 degrees centigrade or something like that, because he went according to Google Maps and got caught in snow and in, in ice and died because the map was showing him the wrong way. Yeah. So that's why, you know, as opposed to a compass, the North Star, and uh, just for information's sake, you know, uh, Balsar can wax eloquent on this better than me, but we use something called a mariner's compass that takes the bearings from the star to establish direction as opposed to a magnetic compass. So that's the basis for this whole program. For us to be able to lead well... The star, but the north star, the star will help you only in the night, not in the day. For day, I think yeah, the compass is still a useful instrument. Oh, Absolutely. So long as you're not near the poles, the compass is always useful. No question about it. Right? The star, we, uh, those who use a mariner's compass know how to spot the position of the North Star even when the star is not visible. Uh, we won't spend too much time on that, but 
this is not meant to be a, a discussion about stars per se, so as to say, we need to find something sustainable to be able to guide us. Right? Um, what was that dialogue that Dayaji shared with us, right? Um, Kashti kirane ta kap hai? Only when the waves batter you. But there is an implicit thing over there that you have a rudder to guide the boat towards the direction you want to go. Otherwise, you're going to be at the mercy of the waves, isn't it? Leadership begins within. And we'll talk more to this. And all the programs that you're going through, and I don't know if you've noticed me, but I've been sitting in on all sessions. <coughs> Excuse me. Because like Dayaji said, it is fascinating to learn so much from so many illustrious people that because I got a chance to, I'm learning. But the point is that leadership, all the skills that you're learning, all the various things, they are going to be moot if you don't know how to lead yourself and lead from within. And that's what this session is meant to be about. So I'm going to get back to sharing. Let's take a quick look at our agenda. We'll talk about leadership being a choice. And where does the choice come from? It comes from our own purpose and values. You know, uh, Dayaji's example of telling his wife, saying one day we're going to have this office or something like this, is something that hit home to me very, very closely. There was something deep-seated, the guided choices and the drive. You cannot look to outside of yourself for that. It has to come from within. <clears throat> Becoming a great leader is an inside-out journey. And we'll talk about very important things like purpose, values, connectedness, self-awareness, and management. And spend a few minutes, if possible, at towards the end on some action planning for you. <clears throat> right now, I'm going to push you into some breakout rooms. And what's going to happen here is I want you to do what's called a check-in. It looks like I don't have rights to create breakout rooms. Uh, Belgi, would you be able to help me with this? Dr. Bell? Okay, as he's coming on, let me Anji, just... Anji, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. I was wondering if you'd be able to make me host so that I can create breakout rooms. No, I'm no current, issue at all, I'm currently no co-host. Yeah, I'm making you the host. Please give me back the host facilities after the session. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, now for all of us, we spend quite a bit of time in meetings, right? <coughs> Done, sir. Just check. Thank you so much. Let me see. No, I have no control, sir. You have the control. Okay. Ah, breakout rooms. Agya. Okay. So, uh, let me just explain what we are required to do here. It happens that events, circumstances, our own thoughts impact our mood. And this mood has a large bearing on our effectiveness. So when you move from one meeting to another, or let's say, you know, before the lockdown and all that, you were driving to work and you were supposed to get into a meeting at 10 o'clock and at 9.55, <clears throat> you're still battling traffic outside your, um, you know, office gate trying to get into parking. How likely is it that your mood would be a good mood? I'm guessing not very likely. And if you're not aware of that, if you're not conscious about it and in control of it, your effectiveness in that meeting can very well get compromised. Uh, this is a very, very powerful emotional intelligence tool. Every session of mine, every meeting of mine, when I talk to my wife, when I talk to friends, we do a check-in. It doesn't have to be formal like this, but for now, in your breakout rooms, quickly discuss how are you feeling right now? And what attitude would you like to choose so that you can get the best out of today's session? 
I'm going to model it for you first and before I push you into breakout rooms. How am I feeling right now? I'm feeling very, very tired. Since the last two days, I'm running a fever, a very bad cough and cold on very heavy antibiotics. But I'm also feeling very charged up. The effect of Dr. Bell's and Diaji's presentations have also put a little bit of pressure on me. Can I match that bar? <clears throat> but I'm also very enthused about being able to positively impact you because that's my mission in life. That's how I'm feeling right now. What attitude would I like to choose? The attitude I want is one of being supportive of your learning uh, and being curious about your thoughts of how you're processing these things. So that's it. And the next person talks. So like it says there, I'll put you into the breakout room only for five minutes. Uh, one per person speaks for about a minute and passes on, on to the next. Yeah. Uh, give me a minute while I send you into breakout rooms, please. We've got 98 people. <coughs> Okay, we can move into your breakout rooms now, please.
Sir, we are back. Yes. Welcome back, folks. As we're waiting for everyone to come back, any quick comments? How did it feel to answer those two questions to a small group? Yeah, in our group, 16, group 16, uh... Entered, started with a, a low mood, uh, but charged up as soon as you see the group and the energy of the people and uh, whatever this thing. Right. And yeah. really confident that we can still be charged up and continue because beginning is a difficult, not the <laughs> continuing. So we're hopeful that we'll close the day with the same energy and enthusiasm. Yes. My group actually 30 and there are only three people, three participants. Out of that, one participant could not back on mute, he was having problem. So Mr. Safik and myself both are there. And uh, of course we had a personal interaction also because we had a extra time. Only two participants <laughs> were, okay. Anyway, we are charged up. Our attitude is very fantastic to listen to you. Fantastic, kind words, thank you so much. Okay, so let's get cracking on with the session again. I must say that in uh, a few of the rooms that I was able to visit, it's hard rending. You know, people are battling with COVID for family members, themselves, etc. Very tense times. So I salute you for still persisting and putting in the effort and the focus to develop yourself. Right. Uh, moving on. So, what is the title of this session? What's the meaning? Even what you have spoken so far. Why do you think this is the title for today's session? We should get the right kind of uh, direction. It's, we should not lose the direction. Absolutely. Yeah. And your, yeah, go ahead. It means firmness. That is determination. Beautiful. With respect to what? With respect to that 
it's going to be firm. There is no deviation in terms of what you need to do. You focus that you want to lead with the go, not stop. Fantastic. Can you see the links to Dr. Bell's presentation earlier and Dr. Uh, sorry, Daya's, uh, uh, Mr. Daya's presentation earlier? I oh, think the North Star, sorry, go ahead. I think the North Star is an analogy for the purpose. So the North Star is like the purpose which will actually drive our life. So if we have some North Star purpose like the North Star, I think, uh, I mean, that's that's what the uh, analogy of this whole program, this particular session. Yeah. How many uh, times you are hit, right? Yeah. yeah, sorry. I think you're done. Yeah. Very well said. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So how many times, see, basically the North Star is mostly used by the sailors, right? So where there is no other direction except the toys or whatever the tools you carry, leaving that, uh, how many times you are hit by the tides and you lose the direction and uh, maybe you stunned uh, uh, the completely opposite direction as you sleep, right? So um, whatever the obstacles come, still there is, you, you should not leave your uh, Beautiful. direction of the North Star, right? How many times the tides come and hit you, you still should not lose your direction. So the North Star will always guide you on that. Very well said. So I don't need to explain this further. We've got a great group of participants here who get it. So, sorry, go ahead. Somebody else wanted to say something. So I was saying that it's kind of a benchmark or something that you look up to. So, Yeah, yeah. But look up to within yourself, outside of yourself. Outside uh, of yourself. Okay, what we're trying to drive is the manner in which we attain authentic, sustainable leadership is finding the North Star within us. Like somebody just shortly said, it's our purpose, what drives us, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So yes, we look up to it. You know, uh, Mr. Daya's vision of his fact of his office, one day we're gonna have this, was what fed that drive. He's looking up to something, some other office, not his, it's outside of himself. But what he's actually looking up to is that drive within him that wants that office. Make sense? Moving on, take a look at this. I'm uh, almost uh, certain that all of you have read this sometime. It's from Alice in Wonderland. <coughs> What's the meaning of this? Why is it here? The meaning is like, if you don't have that, you don't know where you want to go, then where, wherever you want to go, you can go. It doesn't matter at all. Right. A personalized okay, so journey can never take you to success. Fantastic. So we need to know that where we want to go. Absolutely. We have nothing yeah. to lose at this juncture. Sorry, we are working too? You have yeah. nothing to lose if you are at such crossroad. You can go wherever you want. But do you have anything to gain? Yeah. That you'll come to know later. But That's at this point. moment, you have nothing to lose. True, very true. Well said. But however, if you don't know where you want to go and you come to that crossroad, you may very well end up at a place where you don't want to be after putting in so much effort. I'm gonna go off script a little bit here, you know, of my initial design. Um, I am passionate about this view. I don't know if this is true for all of you, but I believe that my parents and my teachers, albeit very well-meaningly, they lied to me. Yeah? Uh, you recall the quote that Mr. Da uh, used from one of those dialogues, you know, Kabil bano Kabil. Success jhak marke piche lagegi. Right? That is interpreted, that is an offshoot, I believe, of something from the Gita, and I think all religions say, talk about it. You know, focus on what you're doing, don't focus on the results. And I'm sure all of our parents have told us this, our teachers have told us this. And unfortunately, in my career, I've seen and I've <coughs> been working with leaders and building leaders and leading people for close to 25 years now. 
uh, there's a very, very common misconception that you know what? I'm going to get up in the morning. <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to be the best I can be. I'm going to keep my head down. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to pr- produce brilliant results, and success will come after me. What is that success? A new client, promotions, etc. How many of you in this group have felt frustrated that you've not got promoted? That you believe your company, if you're an employee, that your company owes you a promotion, despite how fantastically you've done, you've not got promoted. Anybody like that here? No hands going up. I can see one screen. Let me scroll through the other screens. Yeah. Okay. So one hand up. One more hand up. The others are all muted. Yeah, it used to happen up. when I was in employment. Yeah. Okay. 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 Participants are raising their hands. So here is where I need to clarify something for you. You go to work and you get a paycheck. That's it. That's quid pro quo. The company does not owe you any promotion. Make sense? And that's the bottom line. Now, for many years in my life, uh, my profession involved traveling around the world, training different audiences. I believe that I performed in a beyond expectations manner as a passenger. It's been very frequent that I have helped the stewardesses in the plane distribute water to other passengers. Um, it's it's a very common thing that I, because I fly those same routes so frequently, I become friends with the crew, and used to have no problem helping them. Would you say that's meeting expectations or exceeding expectations as a passenger? Exceeding expectations. Yeah, that's what even I thought. And I did this for five, six years. Then I went to, you know, we got out. I was in the duty free. Uh, this was, I think, in Swarnabhumi in uh, Bangkok. I don't recall. But the same pilot who had flown me there was there. I met him and I asked him, buddy, you've been flying me for years now. When are you going to promote me to be a pilot? I have been exceeding expectations as a passenger. Next logical step is make me a pilot. What do you think? Don't have a skill set. Not connected. How do you say not connected, man? I'm a chartered accountant working in the, let's say, reconciliations department. I want to be made manager of reconciliations department. Five, six people raise their hand saying the company owes me a promotion. How is it any different? Different skills. Yeah. Absolutely. Doing reconciliation and managing reconciliations are two different skill sets. So there are four conditions that need to be simultaneously met for you to be able to get a new role. What are those four? Who can tell me? Uh, enhance your skill sets uh, based on the... Very well said. I better learn how to fly an aircraft. So I need to have the skills. I need to be ready for the role. Experience. Yeah. Determination as well. Attitude. Yes. Uh, we uh, have to be able to see the problem beforehand. Integrity and the, the main thing, which is uh, that is the aircraft should not be crashed somewhere. True. And so if you notice, all of you are talking about various element or Lenses through which you see being ready for the role. I need to have the right attitude. I need to have the skill, the competence, the ability to look ahead, etc. <coughs> yeah. So I'm one first condition required is be ready for the role. What's the next condition that needs to be simultaneously fulfilled? What's the purpose? What new idea you are going to bring in that role or? Uh... Any, what is the change you are going to uh, because so many people will be competing for the new role. Very good. So what differentiation can I bring in? Yeah. Okay. I'll accept that. Anything Work as a team. In that whole team, they, sh- they should first accept you to be fit for the pilot, the team. Who, who should accept? Uh, to whom you want to 
I mean, take it like you want to become a pilot. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. Was that Raj Shekhar? Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah, Raj Shekhar. Thank you for that. See, it is not enough if we become ready for a role. Other stakeholders involved also need to believe we are ready for the role. I think it is worse than that. Uh, we are feeling it is a right, not even ready for the role. Exactly. And that's the a side problem thing, is right? that most of the cases we feel just like we me, are ready I for the role, it's easy to find out something for the candidate. If you just count the years and feel it is a right, then it took time to really. Exactly. Then you have to take the responsibility to pull them up first and then promote. So Yeah, it. yeah. And my request would be, Srini, right now, don't think about your people. Right now, think about yourself. Right? Yeah, uh, in both ways. Yeah, yeah. Like so it. am I being perceived by my seniors like that? That I'm doing the same job. I don't have 12 years experience. I've got one year's experience multiplied 12 times. And I now expect a promotion as a right. We don't want that. We want to get ready for the role. We need to be ready for the role. The second simultaneous condition is other stakeholders need to believe you're ready for the role. If they don't think you're ready for the role, it doesn't matter whether you're ready for the role or no. So there are a series of strategies you need to evolve to show others that you're ready for the role. What's the third one? Work as a team. Um, that I would put under being ready for the role, your ability to work as a team, as a team player, as a team manager, etc., is a competence issue and a mindset issue. Availability for the promoted role. Ability? There has to be a vacancy. There has to be a vacancy. Very good. Yes, there needs to be an opening. What do we do? Bribe a lorry driver to knock off my manager so that there's an opening. Well, we don't want to do that. And we may end up doing that if you're not guided internally by our own values. Yeah. What's the fourth one? So three so far are be ready, ready for the role. For the change. <coughs> Sorry, Salish, go ahead. You should be ready for the change. Ready for change. I would put that as being ready for the role itself. Compensation. Our desire, our desire to, do, to, be, uh, to get to the new role. To desire. Yes. That desire, again, I would put under the first condition, which is being ready for the role. So let me tell you what the fourth one is. You got Accept passion. To, sorry? Accepting you. Passionate. And you should be passionate to that. People accepting you, I would put as part of the second condition. So let me tell you. First one is being ready for the role. Second is stakeholders need to believe you're ready for the role. Third is there needs to be an opening. And Both skill sets are different, right? No one better than you should apply for the same role at the same time. Sorry. Yes or no? Come again. Sorry, sir. No one better than you should apply for the same role at the same time. <laughs> I agree. No, no. This cannot be. This is. This cannot be a condition. Why you not? See, your own. Why your not? own skill set, set. Set should be there. If you Can are it? not, you do yeah, not have what, that kind of skill you. sets. Yeah. I don't think it has got any meaning at all. I agree, Sushil. So let me let's let's give you an example. You know, I have changed my presentation deck for this presentation so many times, and the last one was last week. After I saw Dr. Ed Rogers' presentation, I said, "What I have is a piece of dirt. Let me try to do something with it." And much to Belser's frustration, I sent him another version, yet another version. Now, what will happen if Dr. Rogers and I? are competing in these two hours. Who are you going to listen to more? Are you going to listen to Dr. Rogers or are you going to listen to me? It depends on the subject. Correct. We don't know. Uh, we have not listened to you till now so that we cannot decide. We yes. to both of them. Why, why do you undermine yourself? <laughs> I I don't don't you are better than Rogers. No, no, no. One of the key things of a great leader is awareness. <coughs> <coughs> Dr. Rogers' class of presentation is way above mine. But if you notice a big difference in his session and my session, the amount of discussion that's happening here is far greater than in his session. That's my style. Now, the this is please, what depends. See, see, the what moment you, you need, allow more right? people to... No, no, no. One, one minute. One minute. I'm, I'm going to cut this short here because I need to move on. I need to explain okay. one thing. Okay. <coughs> Nobody is saying 
you can control others applying or not applying. Of the four conditions, what is important for you to take away is that the first two conditions are in your control. The second two conditions are not in your control. Yes or no? Can you create the opening? I slightly disagree with that point. Sometimes, if you are yeah. right candidate, okay, you have the right attitude and uh, people believe you can do the role. First thing is, so you don't have to do the same. See, the moment you are thinking that there has to be an opening for me to get a promotion, you are constraining yourself. You can do only that. Right. So One more thing is there. Yeah, as I you grow actually... up, actually technical skills uh, is not the only criteria for you to grow. Very well said. And you oh. looking at your manager or the next level is the only way for me. It itself is the constraint and you are not ready for the promotion. Very good. I agree with you. How to demonstrate. I excel in what I am doing. I can deliver much more had the organization utilize. Very good. While I continued my role, there are 20 things I added in the seven years time. Right. My profile. I never, uh, even I set the same expectations to the, my team. Yes. Just consistently perform and focus on the what you have to deliver. You excel in that and take, keep taking the additional responsibility wherever there is an opportunity. Srini, this is the Things exact... will come and fall oh, on you. One, Things one, come one, and one fall thing on I you. I would like to put here, one, one small thing. Go ahead, Sushil. If somebody else doesn't apply, how does it make you more eligible? Can you please explain? Okay, so you misunderstood me. I'm not saying somebody else does not apply. Hmm. I'm saying first three conditions are satisfied. There's an opening. Now, I want a job as head of reconciliations in your company, Sushil. I can barely spell reconciliation. For that, IJP, you apply and I apply. Who is going to get the role? No. You see, simply not having a right candidate doesn't make someone eligible or not eligible. Let me tell you. Both are not eligible. In case both are not competent to handle that, both are not eligible. You simply Correct. don't have to select one, at least. No, that is not the condition. Correct. That cannot be the condition. Ideal, the ideal world is different. Ideal world is different. Uh, but yeah, that is the reality. <laughs> let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. I think my explanation was not good enough. The point is, I am saying that if you want a particular role in your company, that you have only true. two things which are in your control. Build your own competence, Kabil Bano. And second is show others that you're capable of taking on the next role. I have an objection to what you said, Srini. In the five years, I've added seven things to my profile and I tell my people also, focus on your work, keep delivering, success will come after you, is the wrong promise to make. Mm -hmm. If you are not orienting yourself towards your goal and you're adding things to your portfolio, you're becoming more and more competent, but you don't know towards which road in that fork you want to go you're going to be lost. You'll end up frustrated. You know, see the question. Okay, I, I, I'm not completely denying your point. Uh, at the same time, my point is, why a reconciliation guy has to only become a reconciliation manager? Not necessary. I'm against that. <laughs> I agree with you. What you need to improve is your skills to manage. Now you are going from an individual contributor to the manager, which means more you are uh, becoming a people manager. I agree with you. Right? So it need not be a reconciliation manager. It can be AP manager. It could be. Right? right. All so, I'm saying so is... long as you have an open mind and uh, you're taking up the additional responsibility, you are geared up to go and take the next role, not necessarily the reconciliation manager. Correct, Baba. But that's for the, the only thing I'm role, saying. You need to know which role and be ready for that role. That's all. Anyway, let's move ahead. I want you to read a couple of these quotes that I'm going to show you and tell me what you think about it. Uh, Mr. Sivasta, just I have a couple of points to add uh, in the discussion which was just happening. 
uh, just moving. So I, I totally you. agree with you. You know your points. Uh, no one better than why I'm saying that. Uh, as Mr. Shirmi is saying that you need you need to take the responsibility. You know, as and when the things come, I agree. But uh, at the end, you need to have a very long term goal. Like uh, being a chartered accountant, if you want to be a CFO, I need to you know uh, go into the different department. I need to do accounting. I need to do taxation. So that I have to keep my path defined. That and I, I need to get ready for each step role and then. I have to make other believe that I want to be CFO, and then step by I have to take these particular roles to reach the level of CFO, right? And then I have to see the opening as and when coming into this different area. And then the fourth point which you mentioned, like no one better than company. So like me, that other you know uh, uh, subordinate or other peers are also working on that direction because they have also the same goal. So which is not in my control, and then definitely they will apply for this position. So that I have to see how how I can make my Myself better than them. How I can beat my competition? How can I know that who is in my competition? Well I said, think that yeah. that is what I am looking from this fourth point. Well said. Thank you for yeah. that. Let's let's now focus on this quote which is on your screen. I'm sure all of you have already encountered this quote. It's been repeated to us many years. What is your take of this? Do small things correctly. Big things will uh, be achieved, correct? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we've heard this before. And Which understand part? and embrace your values. That was the last point which I I want to take. Be conscious what are you doing. Absolutely, well said. All of those points are valid. Uh, the way you <clears> thought, <throat> things will change accordingly. So your thought should be very positive. Uh, if you want to have a good uh, path of in your career or what you want to achieve. Very well said. Remember what Dayaji was talking about: belief in self. That came up in uh, uh, Bahelji's uh, presentation also. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Basically, it says uh, the small things you do right, right, will become uh, will give you the right path to the destiny. So. True. True. Now I want you to take a look at this quote also. What do you make of this? Be flexible. Allow others to criticize. Yeah, I think uh, most of the people here uh, crossed this stage. Uh, I mean, especially those who did the CA in the 90s and uh, <laughs> 2000s. Help me understand what you mean by that, Srini, <laughs> when you say cross the stage. So, uh, of the 10 people evaluated me when I'm doing CA, nine people said, why did you choose that? You are not a fit for that. And they give us a lot of geniuses examples, which I started my session today, with, uh, the Bahal session today with uh, giving example of that in a, some wrong case. But the thing is, uh, many people said that you don't even uh, very disciplined going to college. How can you complete CA? And they gave a hundred examples to me. They are not completed how you are able to complete. They are genius. I said, I am, I am what I am. So why you compare me with them? Right. So the, I, mean, I mean, what I'm saying is 90% doubted, and but still, okay. I mean, uh, what okay. I've done is the most of the people completed who I know are also passed through that phase. I appreciate that. Thank you. I have a slightly different, you know, experience. I would say, I, I think you know somewhere we are being judged at every, every stage of our career. Yeah. I mean, TA is only just just the beginning or one one part of our overall career or of our life. I mean, when you start a job, when you you know you get into a different department. When you are promoted, I mean, we, we spoke about promotion just now. Uh, when you are changing your job, uh, you are, you know, uh, I mean, and when we change our jobs, we, of course, you know, move into a you know, senior role. So people judge you that is this guy good enough to become our boss? I mean, he, he's not, uh, you know, inside the room person. He has joined us from outside. So at every stage in our career, you get judged. You know, when your career takes off, when you, even when you start, you know, dealing with a new customer. I mean, whoever is in audit, you, you are getting judged at every point. Uh... Very valid. Yeah. So let me share with you another way to look at this quote. Yeah. All of what you've said is valid. However, what I think Kipling was trying to point out here is one, hey, you must trust yourself. You must have that self-belief. But remember, we are all human. It is easy to go overboard in that also. Keep a check on yourself. That's why he says, but make an allow allowance for their doubting too. Your confidence is necessary. 
But when that goes overboard, it becomes bravado. And that can push us down a very steep slope to our disaster. That's the only thing I wanted to show you that, hey, there is a balance. The thoughts that we have determine our destiny, like Gandhi showed in the previous slide, that self-belief is essential. But even then, we need a well, very healthy self-awareness. We already spent quite some time in one of the earlier sessions talking about self-awareness, so I won't uh, get into that area. But that awareness saying, hey, this belief, is this a stubborn belief or is it still live? Is it valid? That's a very crucial thing for an effective leader to have. Yeah. Moving on. Very quickly, I want to explain this. Um, I call this the SHMB model because of the initials of these four words. Um, anything you, again, heard uh, Dayaji talk about how he comes into sessions and goes away. And his primary thing is, can I learn even one or two things? Um, and I found in multiple weeks leading up to this week also, multiple speakers have talked, and all of you, many of you have also talked about the need for continuous learning. And that's great. The perspective I want to share with you with this is, how is that learning being done? So let's talk about, uh, there was a very facet, I forget his name, one of your CA colleagues uh, gave that presentation on um, data analytics. Mr. Tatarji's uh, presentation was fascinating to me. So now you tell me, okay, now you can't tell me what I thought. So here's, here were my thoughts. You know that very quickly in the screen in front of us, he copied that whole set of pages and got rid of all that garbage, you know, the headers and the titles and all of that. I have struggled with that so many times. And I thought, wow, let me figure out what this tool is and see if I can get it. What am I doing there? That learning was at the topmost level, the body level. I'm thinking about a skill, how to apply that skill to perform a task. I am learning there. But I can go a little deeper. I can get some more knowledge around it, can make it a little more intellectual and say, you know, what are the principles that govern those set of steps that he did to clear the garbage? <clears throat> if I have that understanding, then it does not matter what kind of document it is, I can clean up the garbage. Right? Or I can go to the heart level. Here, this is to do with our self-awareness about our identity. What do I stand for? Why do I want to do some kind of analysis on whether TVs and air conditioners are sold on Wednesdays or weekends? What's my purpose here? And finally, I can go to the soul level, which is, hey, how does it relate to the meaning of me? If someone were to tell the story of Sri on another day, would they include this session in that? Am I making this that integral to my life? Now, there is no right or wrong answer here. But the point I want you to explore in your own minds is any experience you have in life, <coughs> it is our choice at which level we want to deal with it. And the deeper the level you deal with it, the more effective you are, the more present you are, the greater the leader you are. Yeah? Any questions around this before I move ahead? One example, sir. Oh, sure. Uh, I was, I gave this example to another trainer when I was training her on how to use this model. She and I were sitting in a, um, you know, a taxi cab on Marine Drive. This is a few years ago. And um, it so happened that there was a huge wave and we got some spray through the open cab window onto ourselves. The first thing that lady did was she looked at her dress and she was trying to wipe off the drops, droplets of water. Yeah. She was dealing with that instinctively at the body level. I got water on me. I'm going for a presentation. I don't want my clothes to have wet spots on it. 
I need to get it off. Yeah. The second thing could be that, hey, I'm thinking, saying, why did that spray come on to me? Well, because the window was open. Now, because one spray has come on to me, is it likely that no other sprays will come? No, it is possible others can come. So what should I do? Raise the window up. I'm dealing with it at the mind level. I'm talking about something as simple as getting a spray of water on you, okay? Third, go to the heart level. And this is what I told her. I asked her to give me that, you know, use the SHMP to explain this. And she said, I can't think of water spraying on me at the heart level. Maybe when I'm in surgery, you'll spray water on my heart. I said, no, no, no. That's not what you're talking about literally on the heart. But what does this cause you? Have you gone to a beach with your children, with your spouse, with your parents, with your friends? Have you had a good time? Does this bring back memories of that? Does this help you relive that and get you into a better state of mind? She said, yeah. And finally, soul level. She said, Sri, I will never forget this example that you gave of something as simple as seawater spraying on us to explaining this model. That is how I relate to this model. It does not matter what I am dealing with. I have a choice at what level to approach it. The deeper the level, the greater the impact. But of course, like everything, there's a trade-off. It takes more of you, it takes more energy, more time. Oh, it's very exhausting to deal with things at the soul level. It's really quick to deal with things at the body level. But again, let me give you one last example and move on. Uh, there's somebody I heard, I think it was uh, C.A. Rajshekar. Yeah, you're from Bellari, right? Yeah, correct. You're right. <clears throat> So what is Bellari famous for? Iron ore mines. Very good. And the Hampi. World yes. Heritage Center. Very good. Um, anybody here from Delhi? No? Okay. Well, what's yes, Delhi famous for? What do you think? Delhi is famous for uh, historical what places. Okay. Politicians. Politicians. Politicians, lovely. <laughs> okay. Um, so here is one example that I gave to somebody. You know, I'm a person who loves Bombay. I grew up in Bombay. Uh, but according to me, Bombay is only Bhelpuri and Panipuri. Delhi means Raj Kachori. Historic places. No, no, hang on. I'm talking because about my perception there. of Delhi. Sushil, I'm Al talking is there. Sushil, yes. But I'm talking about my perception of Delhi and my perception oh, of Bombay. Yeah, yeah, your perception could be anything. Yeah. Uh, Hyderabad to me means only biryani. Am I wrong in saying that? No, I'm not wrong. I'm dealing with it at the body level. No, you're a foot connoisseur. That's what we can make out. Uh, you can also see that in my size. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, I am dealing with this at the body level. But you saw how Sushil kept talking about historical places, historical places. That's his passion maybe. But if you dig a little deeper, we may find out something about Sushil as a person to say, why is history so important to him? Does he learn from history? How does he use his own history and others' history for his benefit, for the benefit of his family, for the benefit of his society? There we are going to the soul level. <coughs> I hope these two examples are good enough for you to get a sense of that SHMB model. With that, let's move uh, ahead. One query. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, in respect to a particular uh, task matter, how to decide up to which level we have to go? There is no have to. There is no have to. It's a choice we make. Again, I am stuck on reconciliation for some reason. Let's go to AP like somebody else said, accounts payable. Mm -hmm. I can design a, a form with some macros to automate some of the work in my accounts payable department. But why am I doing it? The why I'm doing it will determine the how I'm doing it. 
do i want people 10 years from now in the same company when i am dead and gone to still say this was the precursor to artificial intelligence coming into accounts payable and shri is the guy who did this i'm dealing with it at the soul level there if i want that i can deal with it there and that will change the manner in which i approach that all excel and macro and all that does that make sense Uh, so sir, for each task just we have to go one to example forward. i would like to share sir go ahead ma'am uh like how you are giving example i can relate suppose if i am a reconciliation person and if i want something training on reconciliation in excel maybe a uh vb uh, uh, macros which i have to create so if i uh, get any training that should be first the skill someone is uh, telling me this training is available so i just go and take the training that is body if i uh, get a training along with the some uh, formula and the demo uh, and all that that is uh, something second to heart uh, the second level maybe sorry second is mind level mind, yeah mind mind then third if i see okay this makes sense i can relate with this a uh, little bit and i see if i can apply that is uh, hard and if i'm able to match to my expectation and able to get something out of it and i'm able to do some good macros and excel in my work it's a soul that's what i feel ranaya ji well put uh, it is not exactly spot on but i like the approach you're taking it is more um, see why are you going for that bb course in the first place if it is to help you complete your tasks you're talking body level but i want all future people in this company to always remember ananya thakur as a person who revolutionized vp vb you know microsoft also changed the source code of vb based on how i used it now you are talking soul level okay when you decide the level at which you want to deal with something it determines the manner in which you deal with it okay yes. okay let's move right along um this one might be a little bit of a repetition i was fascinated when i was hearing dr bahel last week talk about uh uh field marshal manik shaw um and i got a video of him uh, you are all familiar with who this guy is right okay i'm taking that as a yes yeah manik shaw just listen to him let me know if you can hear the audio ladies and gentlemen this is very very important in our country we have tremendous pressures we have large families we have fathers mothers uncles aunts nephews nieces their fathers mothers etc we have pressures from them we have pressures from members of parliament we have pressures from all sorts of people and we lack the courage to withstand that pressure this is very important for us in india And that takes me to the next attribute: moral and physical courage. I do not know which is more important: moral courage or physical courage. Were I talking to a lot of soldiers, physical courage. But since I am only talking to a handful of soldiers and mostly civilians, I will lay emphasis on moral courage. what is moral courage moral courage is the ability to distinguish right from wrong and having distinguished that you must have the courage to stand up and say your piece irrespective of what your superior thinks irrespective of your colleagues irrespective of your subordinates you must have the courage to say so a yes man is a horrible man he must be shunned he is a disgrace he may rise very high he may become a minister he may become a field marshal but he will never never become a leader he will be used by his superiors he will be disliked 
by his colleagues and his subordinates have no respect for them. Moral courage is essential. Now, since you wanted to know some examples of moral courage from my past, I will give you a little story. In 1970, when General Yahya Khan put all the pressure on East Pakistan as it was then, and refugees started coming to India, there was a cabinet meeting. I remember the date very well, 28th of April. I was summoned. I had a very strong prime minister and Mrs. Gandhi who ranted and raved at me. He said, what are you doing about it? I've got so many refugees. The chief minister of Bengal has just sent me a telegram. The chief minister of Tripura has done this. The chief minister of Assam is writing that there are more Bengalis there than their own population. What are you doing about it? And I said, no, but nothing to do with me. And she said, I want you to go in and take action. And I said, do you know what that means, Prime Minister? She said, no. I said, it means war. And she said, I don't mind if there's war. So I said, may I please quote from the Bible, the first book, the first chapter, the first verse. God said, let there be light. And there was light. And you say, let there be war, there be war. Are you ready? I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. It is not the right time to go in. The monsoon will break very shortly. And the whole of East Pakistan will be a swamp. I will not be able to operate. The Air Force will not be able to operate. April is a month when we gather, glean the, har the harvest. And the agriculture minister was Mr. Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed. And I said, I will require every railway wagon. I will require every train. I will require all the road space to move my troops. And you will not be able to move your harvest. And then if there is a famine, don't blame me. And I said, the passes in the Himalayas start opening now. The snow melts. And then if the Chinese give us an ultimatum, I will have to fight on two fronts. But then the external affairs minister, the Khalsa, Sardar Swaran Singh said, do you think China will give ultimatum? <laughs> and I said, you are the foreign minister, you tell me. And then my own minister, Jagjeevan Rao, who couldn't call me Sam, he's called me Sam. <laughs> he said, Sam, man jao na. I said, you can man ne ki baat hai. I'm telling you what the facts are. And I said, if you want me to do this, Prime Minister, I guarantee you 100% defeat. Now, Prime Minister, give me your orders. And there was dead silence. And she turned around and said, the cabinet will meet at 4 o'clock. This happened at 10.30 in the morning. So, as the cabinet ministers walked out, I being the junior most man there, was the last to go. She said, Chief, will you stay behind? So I shut the door and I said, Prime Minister, before you speak, do you wish me to send in my resignation on grounds of health? mental or physical. I said, oh, sit down. Everything you told me, correct? I said, it's my job to fight. It's my job to tell you. If your father in 1962 had me as his commander in chief, the country would not have been disgraced. The army would not have been beaten. But the army chief did not have moral courage of turning around and telling him he wasn't ready. So, she said, all right, you know what I want? And I said, yes, I know what you want. And 
I must be allowed to do it my own way, which is all right. No so, ladies and gentlemen, there's a very thin line between becoming a field marshal and being dismissed. I just gave you an illustration of moral courage. Of course, I didn't worry very much because my wife had money if I wanted. She would have looked after. Me. She would have looked after me. Uh, so much for moral courage. Now I come to physical courage. Fear is a natural phenomenon like hunger and sex. Anyone who says he is not frightened is a liar, except perhaps the Gorkha. Everyone is frightened. It is one thing to be frightened and quite another to show fear. It's when your knees are knocking and your teeth are chattering and you are about to make your own geography. <laughs> That's when the real leader comes out. If once you show fear in front of men that you may be commanding, it doesn't matter whether they're soldiers, there are clerks, there are labor, there are students. Once you show fear, you should quit. Now again, General Jesus said, I must give some examples from my own life. This was in Burma in 1942. I was commanding a Sikh company. Oh, my apologies. I don't know what happened. Just a minute. And I went in there. Sir, Balwan Singh said, Nay, Sir, Kalki Ho. Was at that time a light machine gunner. Kyun kya hua? And Son Singh's name came up, and I said, He had been promoted many a Sikh company, big tough chaps, very fond of him. I had. A man called Son Singh, big man, stood about six foot four. He had been promoted many times to Lance Nike to Nike, and every time because he was a Badmash, he was broken. We'd had lots of casualties, and we had to make promotions. So we had a promotion conference with the commanding officer, and Son Singh's name came up, and I said, "No, no use making him; he'll be broken tomorrow." So he was passed over. The conference finished, names were published. I came back to my Basha, where my company was in the jungle, and I found my senior Subhida Balwan Singh, terribly worried. And he said, Saab, Son Singh ko kaid kar diya. I said, kyun kya hua? Usne bola ke aaj aapko Saab boli marega. Oh, achha. Peshi ho. So a stool was put in, a table was put there, and Son Singh was marched up in front of me. Son Singh was at that time a light machine gunner. And light machine gunners carried pistols. And his pistol was taken away from him. So he was marched up in front of me. The usual charge was read out. And I said, so I said, Tumne bola ka tu, humko goli ka. So I picked up the pistol, loaded it, walked up to him, handed the pistol to him. I said, Tera dil hai marne ka mar. And he said, Nay, Saab Kalti ho gaya. So I gave him a tight slap at case dismissed. Ja, bhar. I went off to the mess, had my dinner, came back. Everybody in the company was very worried. And the Subhidha Saab, Balwan Singh said, Nay Saab, aaj raat aapko aapko goli maare ka. So I shouted out, Son Singh, kida hai? I said, Son Singh, aaj raat mera basha pa tum sentry ho ka. Aur kal subah, paanch baje, ek magga cha, aur ek magga garam paani jari banane ke liye. Koi shak? Be shak. And I went in there. 
Okay, I was woken up in the morning by Shon Singh with a mug of tea and a mug of hot water. And he followed me like a lamb throughout the conflict. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you think I wasn't frightened, you're mistaken. I was terrified. <laughs> but if I hadn't done that, if I hadn't done that and put Son Singh in the clink or something like that, everybody would have said, Deka, Hamara Saab Darta hai. Just an example of this. how often during riots and all that, some young sergeant with nothing but a little stick in his hand had walked in and quelled everything by showing courage. So physical courage is essential. Okay, what's your reaction to that? And how, how much of consequence does it have in our corporate world? Oh, that's exactly what we're looking for. And uh, that's, that's the requirement of day in and day out. When you say that's the requirement, what do you mean? When we are leading uh, a team, when we're leading the company, uh, the each and every aspect... Uh, what he said was appropriate here. Uh, we need uh, we need a model ground. We need to be ethically strong uh, for the team to connect to us, for the team to respect to us, respect us. Uh, when uh, we have to lead from the front, uh, and uh, when whenever there is uh, uh, whenever there is doubt uh, in the team's mind, you should be there to make your vision clear, make what is required to be very clear to the team and stand up and act as a leader rather than uh, hiding somewhere or rather than showing your weaknesses. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so, yep. the present scenario, we are influenced by external forces and uh, going ahead instead of uh, coming from within us, internal force. Exactly, exactly. So it's easy to get buffeted by a variety of things, you know. I need more money. Therefore, I am going to take the next available promotion. It does not matter which department. Even if it is in the transportation department, I want to become a manager today because I want more money. I'm not saying transportation part is bad, but I'm talking to a bunch of CAs. Therefore, I'm using something which I think is Extremely opposite. Extremely opposite. Yeah. So when you're chasing after something without having your goal clear, you're wasting your time. You're setting yourself up for failure. And this, you know, although the field marshal's talk was about courage, moral and physical uh, that you show with others, it's equally the fact with oneself. Before he decided that he is not going to put Sohan Singh into the jail, he needed to check with himself, right? Do I have the guts to do this? That courage to lead oneself is my primary point over here today, right? And it's only then that does that come out to the external world, to your teams, to your organization, to your clients, etc. You needn't be fooled, hardly like I was. So moving ahead, some more pictures for you. Who is this lady? No one has seen this picture? No. Rene, Rene is in. Okay, this is Martha Stewart. Have you heard the name? No. no. Okay. She's an American billionaire, was in the media, lots of websites. Uh, cooking business, recipes, rights to riches story. And she went to jail. Next picture. Who's this guy? Ranjan Gupta. What do you know about him? Insider trading. Insider trading. Yeah, before we come to the negative part. Leading Dodge Bank. McKinsey, head of McKinsey. McKinsey. First non-American MD of McKinsey. 
board of ISB. Yeah. And look yeah. at his credentials there. IIT Delhi, MBA Harvard. We're not talking about a fool at all over here. But he too. Yeah. Next, who's this bloke? Nero Modi. Nero Modi. Nero Modi. Yeah. Now, was he a fool? Is he a fool? No. Highly capable fellow. Yet, he's sitting in jail in the UK now. Okay. I and there are lots so. of others, right? In our own, in our own country, we've got uh, this fellow Malia who's hiding in the UK. Uh, we know the story of uh, uh, you know Ramling Raju Satyam. Sorry, let me interrupt. These yeah. are all really, if you are asking that these are fools. I would say the rest, they are fools. Okay. And Let's that talk is about what, and that has made them lend to these places. Today, Nero Modi is languishing in UK jail. It is because of his foolishness. Okay. And whatever wrongs he had done. And greed also. Greed and is also it the goes primary. For, it goes for Malia also. It goes for that lady also. It goes for Rajat Gupta also. Very good. They have all they are all real fools. Tell me, what was the foolishness they did? Whatever foolishness they've done, whether insider trading, whether embezzlement or taking money out of the country and not paying back, right. whatever. But these are not, these are against the ethics, the basic ethics and the foolishness they do. Because the entire life you earn something and lose in a day, that is, I call it a foolishness. Very good. I accept that. Ma'am, one but of the ladies is speaking. I have a different, different point. Yes, sir. I think so. Everybody does. I think so. Whether it is crime or, or mismanagement, all these things is done by everybody. But who is caught is 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 in the jail. No, no, no. This is not about foolishness. This is not about foolishness. This is about greediness. It is not. It is all. This is a late. This, this is the lake of our internal control systems in the country. Yeah. It is they are not foolish. We are foolish. Our systems yeah. are foolish. Correct. This is not about foolishness. This is about greediness. Because we cannot... Stop Everybody is greedy. Who is not greedy in this country? In the world? No. Not Business is greed. Greediness is not necessary. If you do your things in the right manner, money will follow like a dog's type. But if you give the opportunity, who will miss the opportunity? Only few people, five percent, ten percent. I am not leader. saying exception may not be there. Exception leader may there. Stop leader alone. Ninety percent populations. Everybody, if they get the opportunity, they will exploit it. No leader alone will. That's why. That's why we are in the problem, na, Mr. Yes, Mansi. Let's not generalize, please. That's why we are in the problem because greediness is above all. A COVID also ethical ethical. practice. Okay. Uh, I I think I think we have had enough <laughs> views on this, and everybody is right. Nobody is wrong. It's both greediness, it's both foolishness because you will be foolish if you are being excessive greedy and you're going to get caught also because you're going to be excessively greedy. This is the key takeaway so, you know, from the system. Everybody is yeah. right. Yeah, this is a very everybody good is right. <laughs> so, so let us move ahead. And my request to everybody, please allow the speaker to continue so that we are able to gain from him. Remember, we are here to learn. I mean, we all yeah, hear right. each other. Yeah, right. Yeah, so right. we, we, we want to learn from the speaker. So let's learn from the speaker, right? Belji, thank you very much for that. But I'm going to go against you for a minute. There is <laughs> some, you know, Belji is talking about not extending arguments. We are losing time that way. And I completely agree on that. But there is something to be had from the discussion. Look at what uh, Apurvaji said. He said, do whatever you want, but don't get caught. Somebody else in the chat said, bad luck. Do you really want to live your life like that? And that's bad true. in that. So where is the question of conscience in the whole scheme of things? There should exactly. be some conscience, right? Exactly. And that is determined by your North Star. And if you don't invest the effort to articulate that for yourself, it will be articulated by somebody else. Um, I hope all of you have studied the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If you have not studied it till now, please study it. You know, a lot of people have this book at home. Raise your hands, you know, put a hands up over there, raised hand if you've got that book. 
Okay, on this one screen, I can see three or four hands going up. Okay, and of these hands that went up, how many have read it? Okay, this never fails. The number of people who have read it is far lower than the number of people who have the book. You know, usually this kind of book you get in a section in bookshops called self-help. Yes or no? But we buy it for what? Shelf help. It looks good on the shelf. Leave it there. Don't read it. Please don't do that. You know, um, the seven habits is a, the seven habits, Apurvaji, it's seven habits of highly effective people. Tarandeep ji, very good. Congrats on that. Um, it's one of the best investments you can make in yourself, studying it. I don't mean reading it like a storybook. I will be discussing some of the concepts from it over here. But Kavi talks about, it's written by a guy called Stephen Kavi, who's no longer alive. He talks about how mental creation always precedes physical creation. Always. What does that mean? Let's take a very simple example. Mujhe mera apna ghar I want to build a house, my own house. Hopefully some of you have already done this and they've gone through the pain of it, which is actually designing your house. It is a painful process, isn't it? But let's say I'm lazy. I don't want to put in that effort. I am refusing to put in the effort at mental creation. I want to jump into physical creation of the house straight away. Well, actually it's not possible. Instead of building a house that I want, I will be building the contractor's version of the house. Yes or no? I love small bedrooms, but large attached bathrooms. But I will end up with a huge hall and extremely small toilets and bedrooms because my contractor thinks that's the way our good house is. So the physical creation did not happen without mental creation. If you don't choose to do the mental creation, you will be creating somebody else's mental creation. <clears throat> Just like that. If you don't put in the work to solidify your North Star, then what can happen is, let's move ahead now. It's going to be your picture here. Your name. And think of all your achievements. One of the pre-course work that was given to you was your life story, lifeline story. Think of all your achievements. But what can happen in the second box if you don't have your moral compass in place, if you don't have the courage to lead yourself? <coughs> Keep this slide with you because it's easy to call all of these people fools in hindsight. But when these guys were doing their stuff, none of them thought they were actually foolish. And they're all very, very driven people, very smart people. Yeah. Moving right along, I've, uh, you know, running out of time for this session now. So I'm going to skip this. We already discussed this. I'm going to put you into breakout rooms again. <clears throat> What's going to happen is you'll be only in pairs, only two people to a breakout room. Now, because of the dynamics of this session, not everybody joins the breakout room, right? For example, Dr. Bell doesn't join, or some other facilitators who are there don't join. So if you find yourself alone in the breakout room, please wait there patiently. I will come and push you into another room. What you need to do is discuss the first two exercises of your pre-work. What did you do with your life mission? What have you articulated? What were some of the high and low points of your lifeline story? And try and see how has you, what you articulated as your life mission been impacted by the highs and lows of your lifeline story. You know, growing up, we didn't have money to eat. So now I'm only bothered about money. I will ensure that I have money all the time. But is that actually what you want? And how do you want to earn that money? I don't mind so long as I have money. Well, you can make a lot of money 
by smuggling drugs, by being a contract killer. Is money your primary goal? Right? And try to see how these scripts that we build in our minds sometimes point us in directions without the scaffolding to support it. You know the meaning of scaffolding, right? The thing that is built around a building when a building is being constructed to support the um, um, you know, walls being built. Uh, so the idea is one person speaks for about five minutes, about two minutes of feedback from the other person. Feedback is not to be in the form of, oh, this is good or this is bad, but you know, wow, this was interesting for me. I didn't understand this part. <coughs> Your objective is to make the speaker think a little bit more. And then you switch roles. You'll be come back in 15 minutes. Uh, it'll help if you can take a screenshot of this so that you can keep it. When you go into your breakout rooms, you won't be able to see this. Give me a minute while I push you into breakout rooms, please. So folks, those who have finished and come back to the main room, while we are waiting for the others to finish and join, would you care to share how that experience went for you? So the experience was very nice. And it was nice, nice inter interacting with Kali. Okay, what about it was nice for you? It was nice to know what uh, other people feel about uh, uh, our vision, even uh, telling, uh, sharing something in like uh, with like-minded people, that also yeah. gives uh, other uh, vision to our uh, goal. Absolutely, well said. Anyone else would like to share? We got under two minutes left for them to join and then we'll continue. Okay, they should be back in 60 seconds. That's the maximum allowed now. Yes, sir. We are back. Welcome back. Right. Okay, let's have a very, very quick, under two minutes, anyone wants to share, what was the impact of discussing your life life story or your life mission with somebody else? Let me just say, can I? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, so it's something like uh, keeping out, uh, keeping your heart out. This is what I felt like discussing a lifeline story, personal mission statement with someone because it was still up to your heart that you are holding it back and you have never discussed with anyone. I, I'll say 
never discuss with a family member either that how i feel like when i'll be 80 years old and will be uh, putting across a uh, you know my birthday celebrations and all and uh, how my lifeline actually looks like with all the dips and all the highs why i'm not able to maintain it what what should i be doing so it's something like a hard out story that i'll be i was discussing with my friend ravi over there and uh, uh very sensitive i can say that uh not able to sustain most of the things and uh, uh, this is how i felt like true it's not an easy experience at all okay. forget discussing it even writing wouldn't have been easy yes and i am going to encourage all of you to keep revisiting this document right this is a very very crucial document that you keep alive to help guide you this forms your north star your purpose right okay uh, because of time i am not going to invite more comments we're going to move ahead but please don't hesitate to interrupt me if you want to say something so let's continue with the session now all this is about leadership right and i've already made a point multiple times about leadership being inside out right one thing to be very clear is it's not something that you do to people it's done in partnership with people right so i can't have the view that my people are not okay i need to send them off to get fixed and that's how i'm being a leader <laughs> now, you revealing your own passion your purpose your values to your people and guiding them using that Do you recall Sam Manachar's statement, right? When your teeth are chattering, your knees are knocking, and you're going to create your own geography, that's when you cannot afford to show your courage. Sorry, lack of courage. But you are scared. Now, did we think less of uh, Manachar when he told us that he was scared? You know, many years after the incident. No, we still respect him, and that's how we are with our people. That's how we ought to be with our people. and not trying to fix them unfortunately a lot of leaders seem to be going down that route a couple of other points trust is something that is crucial and you heard other speakers also speak to you about this but trust comes from okay let me ask uh, the per- vartika i can see you on my screen can i ask you ma'am um, are your parents alive my mother is there sir your mother is there do you trust your mother yes sir fantastic uh dr behel do you trust Doctor. your wife you had asked me this question before sir no, no, but i have not asked vartika this i'm going to ask vartika <laughs> of course sir. there's no doubt vartika dr behel trusts his wife do you trust dr behel's wife no sir why not do you think she is not worthy of your trust nay no, but i haven't met her so i can't comment on that but do you believe she is worthy of trust yes otherwise dr bell won't be trusting her yes of course now this bridge is something that is very critical to understand you know trust is a choice based emotion when we are leading our people a lot of us do things for our people are because of this covid situation i have gone and spoken to him one on one so many times i have called up my contacts for his wife's or his father in law's uh, uh, hospital bed itna sab kya hu main but still these fellows don't trust me and we get angry that is as smart as dr bell getting angry with vartika saying how dare you don't trust my wife that's not smart is it once mrs bell establishes her trustworthiness to vartika <coughs> vartika still has a choice on should i trust her or no trust is not an automatic thing the best we can do is to display our trustworthiness <clears throat> so let's talk about trustworthiness what builds trustworthiness ah 
thank you shankar ji and uh, vartika ji i seem to have hit very close form i'm sorry it was just coincidental you know shankar messaged me about it my condolences <clears throat> now what brings about uh trustworthiness comfort in a person okay anything else Honestly. upbringing background upbringing background truth honesty honesty is the purpose is the, is the basis of any trust very good actions built build trustworthiness knowing the person better all very valid points now if you notice the structure of your whole program the soul mdp program it's filled with a lot of programs focused on skill <coughs> would you agree with that uh earlier in today's session a lot of you had talked about competence and skills and that's the starting point you know competence but i want you to think about um the image of a king cobra it is extremely competent in striking <coughs> are you going to trust it and walk near it will you nick because i trust it i don't walk near to it right very good you're trusting it based on its competence and on its integrity to its purpose yes and that second part is what is critical unfortunately a lot of people who are in the race for leadership seem to focus primarily on competence and on building competence but what's critical is we also add to it character now kavi speaks very beautifully about this he talks about the personality ethic and the character ethic one of the people who you one of the people who used to report to me had this quirk about him right he come to shake your hand and he'd always give his hand like that and when you shook his hand i i was his manager for about 6 years i think not once have i come away without having to massage my hand it was like he was out to break my wrist or break my hand and every time i question him why the hell do you do this early in his childhood he was taught it seems that a firm grip a firm handshake conveys confidence so you want to go and present to your cfo so what are you going to go and do go to the closest sports goods shop and you get that exercise thing right keep pressing make your hand really strong and go and crush the cfo's hand you're showing confidence that unfortunately is the way a lot of people go about trying to show something without being it you must have heard a lot of people say show your people that you care that's the very very wrong thing because implicit in that is saying whether you care or not show them that you care what kavi talks about is that's the personality ethic that's what's the visible part we're not interested in that because that's not sustainable what sustainable is the character ethic you have to care for your people you have to feel the confidence not crush on the person's hand does that make sense there are many more aspects to this that we you are you will go through when you study the seven habits the other thing i want to take you through is this again you must have already be familiar with it but i'd like to give you my take on it the circle of concern versus the circle of influence the circle of concern includes all those things that impact you yeah uh so let's talk about you know off the east coast of japan there's a particular kind of fish the price of that fish is shooting up nowadays i forget the name of that does it fall in your circle of concern folks no 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 
and it could be because of variety of reasons one i don't eat fish second the fish i eat is you know should fished off the coast of india not of the coast of japan <coughs> so not everything in the world is in your circle of concern circle of concern are things that impact you now there is the other circle that we call the circle of influence the circle of influences are those things that you believe that you can impact so let me tell you the story of about 10 years ago or maybe a little more <coughs> i had moved to hyderabad from bangalore my son was around 2 years old at that time 2 and a half and i was very very categorical and my wife was in agreement with me that we will not enroll my son into any of the normal schools um so i had put him into one place that i thought was a play school and in what they called pp1 they used to give him two pages of homework every day and i got mortally offended by that i thought that was disgusting and i did a lot of research and identified two schools in uh hyderabad that met my needs one school was too far away for us so we skipped that and went to the other school and the story there is fascinating for me if i had not found any school that fit my requirements what would i have done would i have kept my son at home and not sent him to school what do you think the home change the city again <laughs> pardon me change the city again <coughs> possibly change the city um rishab is saying start your own school got the right? second best option sorry the second best option was the normal school you will have to compromise where they are chasing on yeah. marks right from lkg level And you would compromise schooling i could do home schooling yeah but i don't have the competence to do home schooling <coughs> and i did not have the option to change um cities again i probably would have put him into a normal school you know just cursing my luck but when i went to the school the school's name is shloka this is i met the founder and she did her very best to try and tell me why i should not put akshay that's my son into the school i said why are you trying to push me away i want to join your school i want my son to be in your school she said no this is not the normal thing that parents expect <coughs> and i said that's exactly why i have come here right now asked her about her st- story and she said she was the had the same problem that i was facing that she couldn't find a school where she wanted to put her child but instead of operating from her circle of concern and saying oh my god i'll have to put my child into a normal school which is actually what she did she said let me operate from my circle of influence let me start a school of the kind that i want and i saw in the chat you know multiple people are commenting about that school fantastic place that's what happens when you operate from your circle of influence the circle of influence mindset is just a mindset to that says i believe i can do something about it <coughs> right what does that mean in terms of leading other people the vice president of the company vice president of finance let's say has given an order i don't like that order i know my team is not going to like it and i come back to them and i say guys we got to do this and the team says why it's a wrong thing to do we should not do it and what do i say yeah yeah i understand all that but can't help it the boss has said it which circle am i operating from circle of influence no i'm actually operating from a circle of concern where i believe i can't do anything about it and what's going to be the impact on my people how will they view me as a leader <coughs> it's going to be pretty negative they're going to say okay this fellow is acting like a postman the vp could have sent us the email if that was the case and we could have done it 
But how would the same situation look if I were operating from the circle of influence? I could say, okay, the big boss seems to be in a mood that he was not going to change anything. I have to obey him now. But does that mean I have to keep quiet? Can I not get my team to start operating on this? But still, I know that the chief marketing officer of the company <coughs> is very good friends with this financial uh, VP, head of finance. And my relationship with this marketing guy is very good. Can I go and explain to this guy saying, I want some help in getting this guy to re-inspect his decision? I may or may not be successful, but I am operating from my circle of influence. And the more we see people operating from their circle of influence, what happens is that circle of influence keeps growing. So they're actually able to do more and more. But the more you live in your circle of concern, you're saying, oh my God, I am the victim here. I can't do anything. You find that your circle of influence keeps reducing, which means you're actually able to do less and less. And this is a personal choice that guides not only how you live your life, but how your people view you. Any comments or questions on this? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Let's go I to just, the... I just have one small question. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, my, if I am increasing my circle of influence, won't it increase the circle of concern also? Oh, you're talking about it geography, uh, you know, geometrically. Yeah, it might, of course. And that's not a problem, right? Let me give you an example of that. So, we have heard Dr. Bahel talking about civilian leadership as opposed to military leadership of how civilian leaders mostly tend to hide behind people. <coughs> well, I don't uh, deny that that is uh, visible sometimes in civilian leadership. I don't accept that that's always the case. But the point is that I want to improve the quality of civilian leadership. And I believe one of the ways to do that is to exercise my franchise, is to go vote in an election. But if I say, Are, mera ek vote se kya hoga? I'm operating from my circle of concern. So I decide to operate from my circle of influence. I go and vote. Is that enough? I ask myself. And I say, can I identify people in my society, in the colony I live, in my surroundings, who have not gone to vote? Let me go converse with them. Understand why they don't vote. Show them that they need to vote. And as I'm doing that, I will find that, hey, this person has got these problems. And therefore, he has decided not to go on voting day to vote. So suddenly, my circle of concern is increasing, right? Because his things that were in his, his circle of concern have now come into my circle of concern because I want to help him overcome those so that he can go and vote. So as you increase your circle of uh, influence, you're doing more and more, and the things that impact you also grow. But there's no problem with that. Uh, Ritesh says it very, very nicely. One is narrowing the gap in the circle of influence and the circle of concern, then it implies the person is working towards purpose of life and building a better society. Yeah. Thus, walking the talk leads to this. Very good. Very good. So you guys have got the point. Let's go to the last one. And here again, um, this is from a book called The Speed of Trust. Again, I strongly recommend this to you. You heard a lot about trust, right? Is trust really important? And is there a commercial aspect to trust? This last picture that I've shown here shows this very well. And you will inspect, you know, with your own children, with your own spouse, with your parents, with your friends, let alone your colleagues and bosses, you will see this is a fact. When trust is low, the speed of doing things comes down and the cost of doing things goes up. You're taking more time and you're costing more money. 
risk sorry risk yeah risk also goes up here we are factoring risk into cost when trust is high the speed of doing things goes up and the cost of doing things comes down now i used to work for a company called hsbc um a large international bank all of your finance guys you must have heard of these guys they sold uh one of their cash cows it was a us credit cards business they sold it to a company called capital one now i was not a very senior person there i was doing leadership development for seven countries so in the banking scheme of things i would be the last to know like the rest of the public hear about it in the news here's what happened after the announcement of the transfer of the us credit cards business to capital one was announced it took one and a half years to actually transfer the business there were so many regulatory things involved how much time do you think they would have worked on it before announcing that they have sold it how much time goes into the due diligence identifying who to sell to you yes it should have happened maybe more yeah right yes so imagine the number of hours all your chartered accountants would have built the bank and both sides and the lawyers yeah but the belief is hey that level of due diligence is required on the other hand you have the story of this guy who is the owner of hathway hathway baksha warren buffett warren buffett warren buffett bought the world's largest supply chain company you know which one that was it was a subsidiary of walmart oh. the world's largest supply chain company they used to supply do manage the supply chain for all of walmart and buffett's story says that the deal was done over a handshake and a 10 minute conversation i want you to contrast these two stories how was it possible for him to have make such a big acquisition or a 10 minute conversation and a handshake if it is not because of trust imagine how much capital one and hsbc spent in terms of money and time and heartache because that level of trust did not exist between them i wanted to bring these stories up just to show you that trust is not some touchy feely thing that hr and lnd folks talk about it's got a very real commercial thing when trust is high speed of doing things shoots up and the cost of doing things falls and the exact opposite when trust is low any comments or questions on this before i move ahead so when the warren buffett uh, takes a decision in 10 minutes i would say that the decision was not done in 10 minutes he must be tracking this company for a long yeah, time yeah she has a huge oh, army uh, must be having, there must be a background to it of nobody course say, the amount of re- the amount of research that he and his company would have done is fantastic must have taken a few months definitely but the so point is they having some data in hand some concrete evidence in hand based on that they have taken a decision right? absolutely so was, spot on so she not a, it was not a 10 minute decision i believe and uh, generally such deals don't happen in 10 minutes you're spot on sushil i am not talking about the amount of time they took for research i am talking about the d- duration of the conversation with walmart that can be anything that's what matters no no for if warren so, buffett said you have your lawyers talk to my lawyers and the walmart guy said you have your uh, finance guys talk to my finance guys it would have gone for years it depends on person to person in india you see there is a deal between future and reliance and uh, it's all into mess you know the reasons and all that absolutely so, and so, what do you think was trust so, high or low there so absolutely zero. no trust 
speed so the bottom line i want you to take away is you are investing yourself in building trust with your stakeholders not only the people who report to you is something that is commercially necessary it is not a touchy feely nice to have yeah just one more point see there is a small difference in the example in the case of hartshire where the warren buffett is taking his his own money he himself gone and shake the hands and took the decision in the case of hsbc is the professional managers who is taking the decision so they cannot go and take a decision based on trust really it's what is buffett money is it hmm it's warren buffett's money is it yes no not. it is no not. no so the okay warren along with his other investors warren putting the money in the warren public thing. company yeah. obviously public which is the same case with uh, hsbc also no he was not a professionally appointed manager he is the owner of that so let us not argue on that maybe there is a public money the public limited company and all that is there you go for a decision and it can be agreed or rejected even the handshake is subject to that both sides walmart side and this side no one can say that it is done deal no that was different i am not talking about professionally okay guys 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 let me stop here let me stop here right there's another um, uh, expert who's going to come on and talk in a few minutes i need to get away to give him the space but you have got the point trust has a commercial necessity it is not a nice to have so please invest yourself in building trust and we already looked at the route through it uh, for it right so moving right along um so we've already discussed this so i'm going to skip this my last point for today is authenticity uh this is a dictionary meaning look at the one you highlighted in yellow this is critical going back to north star you being authentic you heard how srini talked earlier saying i trust the king cobra that's why i will not go near it i love that comment because what is he why is he trusting the king cobra he is trusting the king cobra to have to display integrity towards its own nature that is being authentic yeah now some things that authenticity are not is being rigid and unchanging what does that mean man i am a numbers guy i am a chartered accountant i don't know how to talk to people in large groups and all that that's not me that is being rigid and unchanging if your role requires it if the place that you want to go your goal requires it you need to build those skills it is not sticking to what feels safe now here's a graphic you all have all of you have access to this deck right so i'm not going to spend time reading this out but albina abibara has done a lot of research on some of the problems with how people understand authenticity she calls this the authenticity trap right one is i'm going to be true to myself i don't want to be artificial what does that mean and look at that the first red circle right with self we have many selves depending on different roles that we play in life <coughs> your authentic self is the self that you believe <coughs> requires to act in this situation so if you're not okay your authentic self is going to say yes i am not okay so i'm going to build those things but i was discussing this with dr bell i thought of an example i'll share that with you i'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy i've been invited for some um, government function you know there was this uh, Brit, uh, deputy high commission of uh, the uk uh, there was a function that i was invited for my authentic self is t-shirt and jeans guy can i go for that function with t-shirt and jeans the invitation itself says black tie affair 
I don't like wearing ties and coats and all that. So, if I'm being true to myself, should I wear a coat and suit and go, or should I go in jeans and t-shirt? What do you think? Go in t-shirts, then the chances are you may be maybe suspended or sacked also. It has no, happened in India. See, uh, either you miss the thing, or if you go and you respect that air. Right. So the point is, why do I want to go for that? Why? If I want to go there, well, it is because I want to build some networking. I got an opportunity to do an assignment for the Deputy High Commission. And that requires one way of dressing, a particular way of dressing. I am not comfortable with that. My authenticity lies in accepting I'm not comfortable with it. And therefore, I need to go and become comfortable with it. I need to go out, buy a suit, get comfortable wearing it. I'm going to wear it for two or three days before the function so that I look comfortable in it, that I feel comfortable in it. That is being authentic. Being authentic is not, I'm either not going to go or I'm going to go in jeans and t-shirt. Does that make sense? Next is maintaining strict coherence between what you say, do, and feel. Um, because of time, I'm going to refer you, if all of you can make a note of this uh, name. Oh. Mehra Bien. I'm going to try and put it in the chat window. My spelling may be off. This guy was uh, an American scientist, social scientist of French origin. And this research is one of the most often quoted pieces of research in the world. <clears throat> he studied when we get messages from others, what are giving us those signals? He said 7% of the messages that we get are on account of the words that you're using. About 38% of the messages I get are from the tone that you're using. And the balance 55% of the messages I'm getting are from the body language you're using. So you see, we tend to trust people's expressions, their body language more than we trust their words. So there needs to be coherence. The words need to say the same thing that the emotions are saying, that is conveyed by the tone, the same thing that the body is saying. But if you take that too far, that's a problem also. Let's say you've never been a manager before and you just got promoted to manager and you want to be authentic with your team. So inside yourself, you're, going to, you know, you're worried, you're conducting your first team meeting as the manager. <clears throat> and you're really worried. So what are you going to go and tell your team? Guys, I'm really scared about this meeting. I don't know if I can be a good manager. <clears throat> and you think you're being authentic. Because you're showing the same words. You're showing the emotion you're feeling. And that is mirrored in your body language. But this goes overboard. This is against what we heard Manikshaw talk about, you know. Where's your courage? So this maintaining of strict coherence is another of those traps. And finally, making value-based choices. Please understand, let me give you a very simple example for this. <coughs> uh, think about the CEO of a large company. Yeah, Let's think about Apple. And let's talk about uh, a trainee software engineer who joins Apple. Both have to follow the leadership principles of Apple. Yes? Now, is accuracy important as a work value? Is accuracy important for the trainee software engineer? Definitely. Yes, of course. Because if he's not accurate, he messes up his code. It can mess up a lot of things. 
Is accuracy important in Tim Cook's job as the CEO? Of course, when he gives a revenue guidance, when he announces to the investors, he can't say we'll make some money. I don't know how much we'll see later. Right. So that's one work value, which is accuracy. Let's talk about another work value, which is, let's say, respect uh, for or focus on sustainability. You know, sustainable manufacturing, etc. Is that important for the trainee software engineer? Yes, it is. Because the manner in which he writes the code will determine whether the machine takes more power or no. And therefore, battery capacity and therefore amount of electricity used, etc. So that's why it's called software engineering. It's not only coding. So sustainability is important for that trainee software engineer also. Is it important for Tim Cook? Yes. In which countries is he going to get his stuff manufactured? With what kind of standards? Now, let me ask you the question. You have to evaluate the trainee software engineer's performance over the last year. And you have to evaluate Tim Cook's performance over the last year. For both people, both these work values are important. Accuracy and sustainability. But are they equally important for both people? I'm seeing some people nodding their head, some people it is, their head. It is important at both the levels, but the, the level are different. What do you mean by level are different? Levels are different because one person is dealing with a particular thing, very small part of the organization. The other person is dealing with the entire organization. Yes. So that makes the difference. Impact will be different. When the CEO of says impact. something, it applies to the entire company. Yes. When a software engineer works, he works for his part of the job and not for the entire company. Correct. So that makes the difference. Correct. But what is the actual difference? The simple answer is, the weightage or the importance of each of these factors varies. The difference is the vision. The no, no, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The company. So, Shilji, one minute, one minute, one minute. Hold on. The point is that when you're evaluating Tim Cook's performance, you will have to place greater weightage for sustainability and less weightage for accuracy. But when you're evaluating the trainee software engineer's performance, you have to put more weightage on accuracy and less weightage on sustainability. Does that make sense? Exactly. Now, that is an important thing to understand, which a lot of leaders, even at very senior levels, miss out. When we move into bigger roles, values that were shaped by past experiences can lead us astray. Yeah? I am now the head of finance for a large multinational conglomerate. The way I became head of finance was I came up through the ranks. I joined soon after my CA. I spent five years in accounts payable, five years in reconciliation and whatever else you guys do, I don't know. I poured over every document. I ensured consistency. I ensured accuracy. Everything I've double checked. Now you've got 45,000 people in your team. You're going to check every document like that? You're still going to do your financial analysis? No, you'll be wasting your time. You'll be ineffective. You need to understand which values take on greater importance at which levels in the organization. And as a result, change your decision-making based on that. Yeah, so according to Ibarra, these are the three big gaps with respect to what she calls the authenticity um, uh, gap, the authenticity gap where people fail to become authentic in response to the situation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with that, I come to the end of today's session, but for any questions that you may have. I had one more breakout activity scheduled, which was to discuss that third worksheet that I gave you about becoming an, uh, becoming an authentic leader, but we don't have time for that now. I would suggest you work on that by yourself. <coughs> but in the five minutes that I have, 
What questions can I answer for you? Yes, Arundhim Ji. Uh, Haresh should be joining anytime if he's not already here. He's going to take you through the styles. He's the most stylish guy that I can ever be. That was meant to be a joke, okay? Yes, yeah, I know, I know. Styles of leadership, yes. Sir, can you make me the host again, sir? Absolutely. Thank you for reminding me. There was a question in the chat, which I'm just going to address and then do that. Oh, can you suggest some good books to read? Absolutely. Uh, some of your previous uh, facilitators have suggested great books. I'm not going to repeat those. Uh, but Leading at a Higher Level, Ken Blanchard. You must read that. You must study uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, Speed of Trust by Stephen M. R. Covey. Another very small book, but a very, very powerful book. Actually, two of them is one is a book called Whale Done. Whale as in the aquatic animal. Whale Done. And the other one is uh, Fish Philosophy. Uh, both these books will help you explore your inner orientation towards leading other people. With that, I would like to convey my heartfelt gratitude to all of you and to Dr. Bell for having me on this. I hope it's not been an absolute waste of time. Have a fantastic journey ahead with your MDP. Thank you very much, sir. Actually, it was a brilliant session. And I'm telling you that if people who wanted to learn would have found huge amount of you know learning value, which at least for me, I found huge amount of learning value in your in your uh, very kind of session, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, may I request C. A. Siva Prasad Anavarapu to please give his vote of thanks. Hello, sir. Hello, everybody. Uh, so many thanks for Sir Sri Vatsa, sir. Uh, Sri, as you like to be called, that was really and uh, I mean it made it made to introspect ourselves the the journey of life so far. At the time of uh, filling up the assignment, this assignment has taken a lot of churning as to what to put. Okay, and side by side along the life journey, there is an authentic leadership which. Uh, forced us to be more authentic. So that way it was a very thing, sir. You have made us through various uh, kind of things. You said in the beginning that it is not uh, pushing the adrenaline and action packed, but then uh, that disclaimer is not true, sir. It, it had, if not adrenaline, it had touched many other uh, emotions of us. You are truly thankful and we can easily make out uh, what amount of strain you are taking through the heaviness and the coughing, continuous coughing you had, despite that you have really made it fantastic. Who, who, who got that uh, the third breakout session also. It was truly uh, introspecting and uh, we thank for your time, sir. We thank for your energy. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. And uh, we'll be seeing you again and again later. I look forward to it. Thank Bye -bye. you. Yeah, I have uh, a request um, um, one or two requests before I give you a 10 minutes break. Of a, uh, should I give a break first? I'll give you a break first and then we'll rejoin at 4.40. At 4.40, we'll rejoin. Um, okay, great. A very good evening to everyone. Good evening. Good evening, good evening sir. Good evening. Good evening. Great. And uh, <laughs> very nice, sir. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll get it into my heart. I want to see everybody's uh, video so that I can see the josh and also the happiness on their faces. <laughs> Krishnanji's face is always lit up, and uh, so is uh, everyone. Thank you, Ashish. Ashish is smiling for a change. <laughs> we are all smiling. We are all... no. When we saw you automatically. Our we we started smiling. Thank you, that's, sir. Yeah, that's Thank how it you, should sir. be. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Now, my request is, uh, see, you all are so experienced. You all are so knowledgeable. 
you are also uh, you have had wealth of years you know underneath your belt so a lot of things you know <clears throat> now why why did i create this groups you can have these discussions in those groups you know which you want to express which you want to analyze now though i gave half an hour more to this uh, session you know they, he was planned for 2 hours but i gave him 2 and a half hours so why did i give him 2 and a half hours because i know it is better to have more discussions but there is a limit you know to continuing to you know stress on the point that you are making what is happening is the others are getting irritated you know everybody is feeling fidgety because we have invited the speaker we pay him pathetic let me assure you this they are doing a favor to us by giving their best for their sessions and if at that time we prolong to prove our point i mean you are right nobody is wrong in life how can i say that x person is right or y person is wrong but is it there necessary you give your opinion you want to say something else say it but thereafter my request is with humble folded hands i am requesting you that like we tell our you know family members just limit it to that then secondly well sir you feel i am wrong you please well, say sir, it i would like to yeah just one moment i'll complete it so then i'll intervention you see when we intervene or we give our opinion only when they ask for it otherwise i don't think anybody is interested in disturbing i do, don't think anybody is wasting time at all no so sushil sir the main thing is it is keep on extending it the main thing is sushil sir we are agree we agree with you yeah. but the thing is it keeps on extending it when it is keeps on extending it because if all the 90 people so let's not involve the discussion at all no 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 sushil sir don't take it don't don't let's not take it personally no, krishna ji let, let me tell you you see who, who is interested in wasting time here no no no, no. we are not saying that because when the discussion in one point uh, I, I, it is my fault it, 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 it is it is my fault that let maybe i have not expressed it let's not do the discussion well. at all Uh, let us stop the discussion my, there sir we you're just not doing it, sir. only the listeners that's it sir we have discussion i am saying after the second time do not prolong that's all i'm requesting and it, it's a very Agreed. decent request i'm making and i got at least 10 messages from different participants i got ki sir let them continue because we want to hear the the person who's come a and b that let's let's he had missed out on one activity which he could have carried out with you all but i would like i would like to see the same josh in groups which i am not seeing groups nobody is having except there are three groups which are very active two groups are semi active rest five groups i don't see any activity so if you want to discuss why don't you discuss in the groups and give your frank opinion and you will get and you have a wealth of people there you know with great experience middle experience and some absolutely like me who are still learning in life and i'm telling you that's why i'm so happy because i keep learning and i'm so happy i was telling somebody when i was sharing my uh, you know uh, today when when this new session started uh, and no i don't know whom i was sharing with commodore i have to interrupt you here i'm sorry you are trying to be too modest and that's not good thank you sir thank you narayan sir thank you so i was telling somebody that uh, listen today morning i posted the message first and then i i sent the assignment and then <laughs> now and some of you noticed it some of you didn't but see I, i have no shame in saying it why should i mean all of us are human here and i have seen in battlefield when i lifted my friend's body uh, in thousand pieces he was the closest friend we shared the room all the time and uh, he 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 was he came to my base just before his death and he died in my base now that gentleman who shared from school days i'm talking about that kind of close bonding we had anil murgai was his name i lifted his body pieces from a field spread 100 yards so after that it makes you very humble you say yaar ye sab sab, sab kuch bahut minor hai but i am also understanding one thing you know that all of you are under stress and this stress is covid related stress some of you have had your families sushil ji to came out of stress i mean he has just been he has recovered from corona or uh, covid he was affected or somebody was affected in his family i know that and you know what happens when stress comes in stress comes in that you tend to become slightly short of patience 
it's not that you are ever short of patience but stress comes and makes so i understand everything but just request is we want to hear the guy who's coming let's hear him and then after that session you can bash me up and like he says uh, narayanan ji says don't be so humble i'm sure i'll show you on military side also <laughs> right sir okay great i am i'm seeing so many smiles from everyone thank you very much and how's the josh hi, i would hi, hi, sir. Sir. hi sir sir hi, very hi sir very hi very hi <laughs> now i will introduce the speaker to you and uh, you know it's actually my privilege to introduce brilliant people after brilliant people people who have really achieved things in their lives you know and it also is something which deals mostly with these people having spent their life first working and then training others now we are going to have an electronics engineer he has got two decades of work experience in sales client servicing and training he has worked with america online axa future group actually many good companies he has conducted workshops on leadership team building sales service negotiations and facilitation skills he has designed assessment and development centers he is a certified hogans and disc facilitator i am not sure what is disc he will explain us he is certified on blue ocean strategy which i know but i wouldn't like to share that with you from cdep inciat and france he is a change management expert and he's done that from prosci us he is a coaching training expert and he is also consulted with honeywell wear india manipal global education coton pearson quest and many more i wouldn't like to stand between me and him a brilliant person haresh advani ji please come up and discuss with us the leadership styles thank you sir thank you thank you thank you for that introduction uh, dr bell and thank you for having me over uh good evening everybody good evening right uh, good evening good evening sir good evening sir good evening right so uh ladies and gentlemen what uh, we have in a little while is a session on uh, the leadership styles that we would use or tend to use um the way i normally run a workshop is i like to capture expectations first but with about 90 odd participants it's a little difficult to do that so what we're going to do is we're going to dive into the session straight away and uh, the one thing that uh, we'd like to probably start with in a very quick time is you'll have most of you all have completed your leadership style self assessment um just one thing that i'd like to mention before we move is feel free to ask questions um do not stay on mute you know that's really important and at any point if you feel that my voice is not coming out correctly let me know and i will switch the network that i am on right now and i'll go to another network that's the only request that i've got right um so the voice so the voice is slightly low otherwise it's perfectly fine okay so in that case i will raise my voice is this better that's better much better right cool thank you very much um So with that ladies and gentlemen let's dive straight into the session can you all see my screen right now Yes yeah awesome. yes. yes sir thank you um and just one quick uh, reminder the name is Harish the word sir doesn't apply to me i'm actually not as old as i look it's just the hair that's white right So here's what we're going to talk about uh today. We're going to discuss, you know, a quick introduction to the leaders window and um look at your leadership styles. Application of the leadership style is going to be based on certain cases that we would give you, we'd break you into teams and then you folks can go ahead and um you know, do those little case lists that we've got. Uh after which we take a look at follower styles and how do we map leadership and follower styles? Fundamentally, that's what we're going to take a quick look at. as has been told to me i promise to give you a quick break in between also uh so with that you know leaders normally operate among two key dimensions right one being the directive leadership and the other supportive quick question any thoughts on what would be the behaviors of directive leadership and what would be the behaviors of supportive leadership anybody uh, direct uh, sir can i 
Yes, please go ahead. Uh, directly leadership means like uh, he, he will give the instructions and uh, he expects the things to be done, like a more of a bureaucrat sort of thing. Okay. And supporting leadership may be like uh, it is a team building and uh, with the team team support and he will be the team player. All right, fair enough. That's... In case of direct leadership, uh, team feels uh, absence of leader. In case of supportive leadership, team feels always leader is with them. All right, that's a good one. Yeah. Directive leadership is a top-down approach. Okay. So in the supportive leadership, it will be a you know, normal smooth flow approach. Okay, fair enough. Sir, in direct leadership, one thinks he is only the leader. In supportive leadership, he creates the leader. Yeah, interesting thought. Good one. Yeah. All right. All good answers, I must say. Uh, so yeah, so let's take a look at it, right? Uh, basically, like I rightly said, it's more a question of what to do, when to do, why should I do it or shouldn't do it, and how should I do it, right? That's really the whole thing with directive leadership. When it comes to supportive leadership, you're looking at, you know, how do I understand what's, what's stopping this person from performing? Asking a lot of questions, right? Um, you help people make their decisions and uh, a lot of feedback. In, in, a, in a very constructive way, so that as the person owns the action plan, so to speak, going forward. And, and that's what it's really all about, right? So that's, that's the two elements. Now, um, I, I took a look at uh, most of the leadership styles that were there. Uh, when, when uh, you know, I, I saw you folks' uh, responses. Uh, very interesting to see that a large number of us fall in a particular style. And um, I'll, I'll kind of talk about that. Of course, there were a couple of, you know, aberrations that I noticed also. Now, when we take these two things, directive and supportive leadership, and you kind of marry these two, right, you come up with four different styles of leadership, okay? Uh, typically called S1, S2, S3, S4. As you would have seen in your self-assessment, it was probably called style one, two, three, and four. Um, so let's take a look at style one. Okay. Um, let's dive into style one straight away. Now, what style one, if you look at this quadrant, all right, it says low to high on directive behavior down and low to high on supportive behavior on your y-axis. Your style one talks about high direction and low support. Right. Th this point, the leader normally decides alone and they tell people the what, when, why, even the how, pretty much. And uh, people are recognized for complying with directions. Now, there were a lot of folks over here who were style one. You want to quickly raise your hands? From your responses right we've got quite a few yeah that's it your predominant style so the highest score on your sheet when you were scoring yourself in your self-assessment um <clears throat> sorry it would have been under s1 i'm not seeing the other people raise their hands at all All right, fair enough. So my question, folks of style one, does do you relate to this particular thing that you're seeing right now? In terms of what the behaviors could be? Waiting for a response. Uh, so style, style, style one is uh, uh, we, we, I, I didn't get much numbers for style one S one. But those who have style one, are you able to relate to this particular style, or do you have any thoughts or questions around it? Yes, 
Yeah. Okay. It is true, but uh, tried several times to change myself, but unable to get up. Okay, fair enough. Um, okay, so we'll let, let's talk about that a bit. Now, uh, here's the thing: there's nothing wrong with this style. Okay, there's nothing wrong with this style. Tell me this: when would you normally want? To, when would someone normally use this particular style, where you're actually giving them instructions and expect them to follow it, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? When you don't trust your team. Oh, that's a little harsh. <laughs> Maybe when they are not uh, very skilled or, in a crisis uh, scenario. or not very experienced. Uh, so for style one, uh, uh, I prefer to use it on unskilled labor in an industry where uh, we need not support anything for them, but we should just direct them in the direct uh, what they should do. And they have to take it forward. Okay. All right. Uh, so you you yeah. With a well-designed setup <laughs> and plan, a team is tuned up to execute the things. So it goes uh, from uh, this one, like direct to it. Okay, fair enough. When, when, you, know, engine, when you have the plan in your head, that when is you end, what the results will be and this is what will bring us the correct path, then you have to be a direct, uh, the, like the leadership style should be S1 because then you know where you want to achieve and you give or align people. In army also, they do the same. They don't say, okay, let's come and give your suggestion. They say, this is the way, this is the mission. One, two, three, four, five, you do it. Fair enough. Point taken. Not, not exactly, sir. I want to interrupt on this for army. army thing. Uh, in fact, sir, in army, we don't uh, take unilateral decisions as what is being, you know, somehow the impression outside in the civil is. We have a closed door meeting between the experts, we take the inputs and then in, 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 then the boss decides finally which is the best option to take. Okay, fair enough. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, you know, where the cases where uh, you have the new joinee which is low on experience and then you want to give the clear direction to him, you know, what he really needs to do. Suppose uh, I have some, you know, uh, person joining my team, then I have to really make him understand what either, you know, rules or policies where I need to give a lot of direction to him to set up in the new role. That would be the style. Yeah. Right. So, and uh, absolutely right. In the environment, when there are set procedures, I mean, the deviation is not allowed. So I think style one will suit for there. This this coming from <laughs> a finance person, I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> right. Highly process driven. Yeah, the oh, second one is more about uh, it's a more a process driven as my earlier people commented already and you have a people well trained and uh, knowledgeable people working in that. Right. They really don't need a close supervision so, or direction uh, support but what you have to give is uh, what is your expectations uh, and by when you need and how you need. So I think uh, basically two ingredients. Up? One is uh, knowledgeable people and two, it is a more a routine and uh, recurring task. Okay. Like in this COVID situation, we have a SOPs for every uh, work. Okay. All right, fair enough. So I okay. So a, a few good thoughts, and I'd like you all to hold a couple of thoughts until we come to the other styles also. And there was a response in the chat: no high direction is needed where an expertise gap exists. Right. So, and uh, it was rightly said a little earlier too, that when I have a person who's a new hire, all right, that's the time I would like to use this particular style because the person is new to the organization, new to the processes, new to the culture of the organization, all of that. So you use a fair amount of the um, style one. Yes, which is yes. Right? Additionally, it may also be used for an experienced person who's moving into a new task, which they have not done earlier. Right. So, for example, if I was to come and look at how to balance, uh, you know, how to look at a balance sheet, you would use a style one with me. In spite of the fact that I've got a fair amount of experience, because I've never probably done that effectively. Right. So that's the normally the two areas where you would tend to use a style one. Fair enough. Uh, so sorry, uh, maybe yeah. I misunderstood. Uh, what do you mean by direction and support uh, here? So, so do you think the new join, sorry for it, uh, do you think a new join doesn't need the support? Because I am looking at from that uh, hand-holding as a support, not a directive. 
All right. Sorry uh, for misunderstanding, but just want to no, clarify. No, no, please, please don't apologize. Your, your, your question is very valid. And Chandrasekhar also had the, even when team is deviating from the process being followed. Yes, you're right about that. Um, so the thing is this. It's not, it's not that you're not providing any emotional support to the person. That's not what we are talking about. Right. But because you want the person to understand how things are done, you would do the how, why, when, what initially. Right. Not to say that you're not being supportive. That's, that's not the idea. The amount of support, the support factor is a lot lower than the direction factor. If I was to look at it that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, can I can yes. I uh, tell one thing? What I understand by directive is basically leading it from the front and being supportive means uh, my team members have some initiative and I am supporting them to take the lead. Is it something like that? Yeah, could be to some extent, but hold all those thoughts because a lot yeah. of your thoughts are moving into the next few styles. So that's the only thing. So, all right, great, but but good answers, and thank you for that. Let's quickly get back into this, and I will take you through the second style, which a lot of us actually have, right? Uh, a large population out here has style two, as was also shown in the chat box. This is the high direction, high support, okay? Now, here is an interesting twist. The decision is made with, the, with inputs from the team member, because at this point, right, the the experience level of the individual is a little higher. So the leader listens to team members, influences them, and the recognition is provided for the quality of inputs provided by the team member. Right? Please note, it's interesting that over here, the decision making is still with the team, with the leader. It's not given to the employee. All S2 people, are you able to relate to this? The style two. Yes, sir. Definitely. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Sir. Right. So, and again, this is at a point when you have your um, team member who has some level of expertise in that area. So say, you know, if, if I'm new on your team, you'd probably use a style one. If I've, if I've been on your team for maybe four to six months, you probably start using the style two with me because I pretty much learned the ropes by then, right? And then you're willing to say, okay, you know what? Let me see what Harish has to say about this particular thing. That's, that's really how it would probably go. Your next style, which again, a lot of us are in, okay, is your style three, which is also known as the coaching style, okay? Here, the leader does not take a decision, supports the team member in, in decision-making, right? The team leader or the leader listens actively, he or she listens actively, helps people make their own decisions, and recognizes people for accepting and seeking his or her support. So this is where you get into a serious amount of coaching with the person. And you ask a lot of questions. So a lot of listening happens. And uh, that's how you start helping them pretty much understand the, the solution that they want to take. Style three leaders, does, does this resonate with y'all? Yeah. Yes. But yes, yeah, sir. It, it goes, yes. it's a mix of style two and style three. So. Uh, yeah, a lot of y'all have style two and style three. It could be yes. either style three being the primary and style two the secondary or vice versa is what I've noticed largely, right? And mm -hmm. style two yeah. and style three are normally the safe operating zones. Yeah, but 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 in my case, I know I got points for style four also, uh, which was second. But I but I'm typically style three and style two type. I don't know. <laughs> okay, what was your? But I understand. Uh, uh, in style three, we are relying more on the people, giving more more uh, power and responsibility to them uh, to do their own. Yes. Yeah, sorry, you were asking questions. Sorry, you asked. No, no, I was uh, mentioning my understanding. Okay. No, no. Uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Harish was asking something. Sorry. No, so uh, my my question was actually your your styles. If you were looking at the scores that you spoke about. Yeah. 
right? Uh, so you said, what is your style four score? What is this? my style four was fourteen? Okay, my style four was fourteen. Style three twenty two and style two ten. Ha! Huh. So you are basically between three and four. Yeah, but actually I am between two and three. <laughs> actually, you are between two and three. Yeah, you have a style three and a style four. Yeah, that's what I've got listed out here: primary style three and secondary style four. What comes out of that? is that um, you are largely a person who either coaches them and or you tend to delegate a fair amount of work yeah right and that's a good zone to be in because what happens over here in this kind of an approach is your team members start learning a lot very quickly right yeah and um, they they pretty much kind of uh, become independent, and you would have a lot of time. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I keep myself free. <laughs> well, you don't want to say that. You want to say I keep myself open to more learning. Yes, yes. <laughs> correct, right. correct, I, correct. I had somebody say style two primary and S one secondary is contradictory. Not necessarily. Uh, why do you think it's contradictory, Tandeep? Actually, uh, there it is written that high direction is common, but high support and low support. That's why I said uh, it's contradictory. So it's like this, right? Your S1 and S2 is where, actually, if you look at it, okay, this is the area where the leader maintains a lot of control. There's a lot of control that's happening here. From here onwards, something else, yeah. From here onwards, if you look at it, the control starts reducing. So it's not really contradictory. Does that make sense to, to kind of split it and look at it? Yes, but still I'm confused. Okay, so share the confusion. What exactly is it that's kind of blocking the, the thought process right now? Yeah, uh, if I see, uh, means high direction and high support. It's a, I think it's a good thing. But if I come here in uh, style one, mm -hmm. low support means it kind of having a negative impact some in wow. some way. Okay. And I, I have, I think, 16 in S1 and 17 in S2, my score. So okay. there is not a lot of difference. Fair enough. Okay, so first things first. Um, disclaimer or conditions apply, if I may call it that. You don't need to get hassled about this. Okay. Right? Now, let me ask you, are you, uh, what, is the, what is the kind of the team that you are managing? What's, what's the team... Component like? Right now, I am a means of head, branch head. So I am having a team of CAs, MAs, and BCOM for me. So I obviously give directions, but if it comes to CAs, then uh, they are uh, having a same post like I am having. So I have to be very careful to give any uh, say or uh, anything to them. So this is like. Okay, so so my point, my question really was: Are you managing a team right now, or are you working with a team where all of you all are pretty much peers? Oh, uh, I'm managing. You're managing. Now, yeah. what is the composition of this team? Now, what I mean by that is: How many freshers? How many newbies do you have? That's that's pretty much what my question is. Okay, right now there are uh, almost everyone is fresher. Which is why you're in this mode of operation. Okay. Which is why you're in this mode of operation at this stage. There's no harm. It's perfectly all right. The challenge is once these people start getting better at what they're doing, if you continue to use this style, then there's where, that's where the challenge lies. Right? So what I'm trying to say is, let's say Hanesh is on your team. And Harish has, you know, finished graduating last year. 
and um, he's doing all right. Okay, he's doing okay. But somewhere you feel that you know he's uh, he's making a few errors here and there. He's probably not following the process effectively. Blah blah blah. You would use a style one or a style two with him. Okay. Six months down the line, when you see that Harish has actually improved a fair amount, and you're still using style one, style two, that's when the challenge lies. Because once you see him improving, you would start changing your style to an S3, which is the coaching style. All right. The, the whole idea over here is how do I use, how do I A, understand the style? B, how do I use the appropriate style with the appropriate person at the appropriate time? I know I used a lot of appropriates over there, but that's really how it works. Does, does that kind of put you to rest over there and not get you hassled or bothered or confused? Yeah, no. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, checking the... Uh, all right. I got S1, 11, S2, 11, S3, 13 as well. All right. So Rajesh Mantri is more of a coach and a, de and a delegator and and your scores are like pretty much out there. Uh, fairly balanced. Just how you use it is what makes a difference. Sir, okay. I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, uh, at some point of time, uh, we would like to move from style one to style two. So, mm. uh, uh, sorry, rather, uh, 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 now from the direction point of view, I may be uh, low or I might not equip. I don't have enough skill set. So mm -hmm. I want to acquire more skill set on the direction front. So that is also holding uh, me to uh, become an ideal leader or to become a leader. So uh, that acquiring a skill set is also holding you from uh, uh, making me in the low quadrant rather than moving from one quadrant to the another quadrant. So is that also uh, plays a role in uh, giving a, giving uh, leading a team? Or, uh... Great. That's, that's a wonderful question. Can I request that you give me another two, three minutes before I answer that? Yeah? Yes, sir. Thanks. All right. Great. Thank you so much. And once again, the name is Harish, not sir. So. Now, let's take a look at the last style, all right, which talks about style four. And this is where there is low direction and low support. Now, what does this mean? This is a this is the kind of a style which you would use with a highly experienced person on your team, right? You allow the team member to decide. They know the job. They know what needs to be done. Don't even bother giving any instructions. It's like, hey, boss, here you are. This needs to be done. You know, uh, this is the kind of timeline I wanted it. You delegate the task and you go to sleep. And then whenever you want that, that task is delivered to you. Right? So these are your four different styles that you've got. Okay, and very few of us are actually in this particular style of style four. If I look at this entire set of scores, I've got some people like Paras Jain who've got a style two and a style four as a secondary. Uh, I've got Shailesh as a style four. Uh, Shiv Prasad, style four, your secondary one. Um, few and far between. Apoorva, yours is a style four like we discussed earlier. Samir has a style four. Um... Quite a few, actually. Madhu Babu, style four is your secondary style. Okay. Of course, there are very few who have, I don't think there's anybody actually. There's only one. Sridhar Swain, your style is style four and style three. Interesting. So a fair amount of delegation goes on over there. So, uh, yeah. And uh, Pushkar, you also got a style three and a style four. Vartika Singhal has got a style two and a style four. That's interesting. Just Sebastian, style three, style four. That's what we've got. Now, before I address the question that was asked, uh, does, 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 does this resonate with everybody, whatever we've discussed about the four different styles right now? Whether uh, yeah. between a style two and a style four is uh, good enough, good, good thing to lead a future bigger, bigger organization. Okay. Um, Good question. I'm going to come to that in a minute. Uh, Harsha Panwar, your answer was absolutely right, saying just to use in appropriate situations, make them equally effective or ineffective. That's the other part. Yes. 
Style now, uh, according to situation is what J Manish Jain says. Absolutely right. Uh, yeah. And uh, Nimrit Gupta, you're also Nimrit Gupta, you're also right. Yes, sorry, there was another question. Yeah. Uh, hi, Harish. This is Darshan this side. Yes, Darshan. Um, I have uh, this confusion with respect to, I mean, my style, which I noted down is about 12 in the style 1, 13 in 2, 18 in the 3, and then 7 at the end. I mean, I'm and to be frank with you, I'm not able to figure out as to what exactly is the conclusion all of it. As in. So your highest score is actually style three, which is your coaching style, which means you invite people to think rather than tell them what to do. Okay. You prefer that. That's your dominant style. Mm -hmm. Right? So if I was to just go back over here, you support them in their decision making. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, let's say if someone comes to you and says, uh, hey, boss, I got this problem. What do I do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, typically a style one or a style two will tell them, go do this and come back. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Great. Problem solved. No issues. But the next time the individual has a problem, they're going to come back to the leader and say, hey, boss, I got the same problem. Mm -hmm. Go do this. Come back. Now, cut to style three. What happens in a style three is, hey, boss, I got this problem. Okay, let's talk about it. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, you know, Dharmesh, let's uh, see. What exactly caused this issue? Why did this issue come up? Hey, boss, it was because of this. this, this. Okay, so what do you think are the two things you could have controlled the last time? If I had controlled blah, 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 it would have worked better and maybe you wouldn't have this problem. Great. So what do you want to do right now? You get the style now? Understood. So it's more of passing off the buck on the other side. <laughs> no, 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 no. Then, Please don't say that. <laughs> oh, good Lord. No, it's not pa passing the buck onto the other side. It's more of getting the other person to think so they don't come back to you with the same problem again. Exactly. Understood. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. That's Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Question. Uh, yes. Gopal. So if I'm giving, if I'm high direction, does it mean that I am dominating the team? It means you're, con you're, you're more of a controlling person. Okay. But uh, am I in domination of the team? Possible. But then again, I'll need to know a little bit more about your team to make a statement of yes or no. Most of them are juniors to me. All right. Uh, what would be their average experience? Ashish and everybody else, you're absolutely right in the chat box, by the way. Yes, sir. Gopal, uh, what would be their average experience? Two to five years. Two to five years? Yes. Okay. Now, let me talk about the five-year five -year experience person. Where do you think that person fits in, in terms of their, their knowledge, their, their ability to complete certain tasks? No, it's a medium, not a skill, much high skill. Okay. So, and how long has this person been with you? The five year experience person? Three to five, two, it's from the starting, from the day one. All right. Now, tell me this if I have spent five years with you, but I'm still not very skilled, what's the issue? I'm not able to support you today. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. I'm not able to support them properly. Let's not look at it that way. Let's look at it a little differently. Okay. Is it possible, right, that Gopal has been using the same style with me, that whenever I go to Gopal, Gopal tells me what to do. At the most, he may ask me a couple of questions, but makes the decision on his own. Is that what's been happening? Is something you need to think about. Now, if that's been happening, then you've caused this. Okay. So what do you probably want to do the next time to avoid this? Where And look, what's going to happen is you're not going to have time to do your own work. Okay. What, what, what's the question? I said, you're not going to have time to do your own work. You're yes. always in a problem solving or a troubleshooting mode. You're putting out fires. Correct. Now that's going to be very, very stressful. So it's literally like that office cannot function if you are not there. Okay. 
that's got to stop. And if you're going to operate in this mode, I would seriously encourage you up your health insurance premium. You're going to burn out very fast. Okay. See, the thing is, when, when I come to you with an issue, if you're going to give me the solution, I'm going to keep coming to you. Right? But if you're going to make me find the solution, if you're going to allow me to think and help me grow out here, the number of times I'm going to come back to you is going to reduce. And that's going to enhance my development, your development, both. Right? So you can sing fire. Thank you. I can literally visualize you on a holiday, but you're on the phone the entire time and your family is kind of like, hey, what the hell is this? Thank you, so, thank you. again, your, your call. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, so I'm sorry, just that, one uh, thing. Yeah, uh, okay. Just that I see this Go everywhere. Ahead. I mean, in my articleship days, in my current days, even if they're on yes. uh, holidays, they'll be on the phone, yeah. available on the phone. I think this is a general problem across. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you lose me? Or can you hear me? Uh, no, that wasn't my question. That's uh, just my observation. That's an so observation. Yeah, but but yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, it's there. It happens everywhere. I, I was pretty much a style one, style two person for a fair amount in my life until, you know, finally people, you know, I mean, I, I had a 360 degree feedback. I had some good bosses who gave me feedback and... Uh, help me kind of change okay really help me change so that's how it is and so and i'm going to just go ahead and, and answer another question uh give me a sec over here while i bring up the screen uh, the slides on the screen yeah okay now what we're saying is if if i am allowed to do a little bit of we are drawing now, this is the time when you've got a person who is not so mature with respect to the task, right? You probably do it here at a, at a fresher level. The person's experience grows a little, you will move into an S2, okay? The person's experience is much better and you see that they are doing better, the, the kind of inputs they provide are really of a good quality, et cetera. You would then start moving into a coaching style where you would ask them a lot of questions and help them figure out what's the way forward. Once you see that the person over here has really done very well and they hardly come back to you with issues, they come back to you and tell you there was an issue, this is how I solved it, you will start moving into a style form. This is person and task dependent. This is not applicable to the entire team. This is not applicable to the same person for all tasks. For example, if you are looking at an automation process, right, for your uh, organization, let's say you're looking at some sort of automation with respect to reimbursements, okay? What style would you use with a person who's been with you for three years? No support, no direction. Uh, you would use this style over here? A new project of automating the reimbursements? I think yes, three. Uh, sorry. One or, or two. It will be, be one S, two. S1 or S2. Yes, you would use these two. Right? It's a high visibility project, folks. You would have to be within this zone. Okay. Now, this is a person who's got a high level of experience, probably about six, seven years, maybe eight years of experience, but you would use this style with them. On another issue, on a day-to-day -day issue of, let us say, um, responding to operations people about certain things, you would probably use this. This is the style you would use. Same person, different tasks, different styles. Are we connecting with this? Yes. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay, so does this answer the question previously that somebody had where I had requested for about five minutes to answer the question? You had a question about, uh, hey, what do I do? And uh, what, what style should I use when, et cetera, et cetera. There was a question. I, I, don't get, I don't remember the name of the person who asked it. Okay. Now, with all these leadership styles, here's another piece of information that's really important to us. This part is what you call as a directing, problem solving, developing, delegating is what we spoke about so far over here. This part is if you overdo your style. So what are we saying? If at any point you overdo your style of directing, you can be seen as a person who is dominating. If you overdo your bit of talking to your people, taking inputs, and you know, then making a decision, you can be seen as a person who's overly involved and don't allow the team to move forward. Some people like to just sit and bite your ear off and have some discussions which means you become over accommodating over here under the garb of wanting to learn from you. They just want to sit and, you know, shoot the breeze with you. They can start taking advantage of you over here. Be cautious. Another big danger that exists, if you delegate without a follow-up and without a plan, you then become an abdicator, which means there is no ownership, there's no accountability and things fall through the cracks. And that is a dangerous thing to happen. Does that make sense, folks? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, you've all uh, got the handout that's come to Has everybody got the I just got muted. I don't know why. All right. So uh, question, has everybody got the, uh, the handout with them? Okay, great. I'm just going to get you into some groups. Where you want to put them in breakout groups, sir? Yes, we'll have to put them in. Um, I guess uh, what, what, what I'll do is, sir, what I'll do is, I'll uh, give you the rights, yes, host sir. rights. Yes. Make me the host after you're finished. Sir. Sure, sure. I think I'll do it once I'm wrapped with the program. I'll put it back. Yes, a given, sir. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Recreate these. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read out the first name in each breakout room so that you all know who's breakout room one, two, three, four, and you know which case you need to work on. So, Bishnu Agarwal, room one. Agnel D'Souza, room two. Akshay Kulkarni, room three. Please make a note of these. Ravi Deora, room four. Kamlesh Dibrewal, room five. Apurva Jalani, room six. Oops, where are the rest? All right, here we are. Uh, we've got Ananya Thakur, room seven. Abdul Salam, room eight, and Ashish Kaushal, room nine. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what it is. In your handout, you have nine cases that have been listed out. 
this should be, if I'm not mistaken, on uh, on page 18 or 19. Could you just take a look at that? The handout that came to you. There are nine cases listed out there, little caselets, small paragraphs. And 10 cases, right? Yeah. Okay. It should be nine, not 10. I no, it is not the assignment. It is It is oh. the It is the handout. The handout is the assignment, not the self-assessment. What Prua, can you put the handout on the WhatsApp group? On the handout on the WhatsApp group. Okay. There are 10, 10 caselets, sir. Send it to me, sir. Send it to me. I will put it in the group. Dr. Bell, you don't have the email I had sent you? I'll just send it out to you again. Just give me a minute, please. So instead of email, so can you just WhatsApp to me? It'd be much easier straight away. I'll put it. I'll just plug it. Just give me a second. It has already circulated earlier, sir. Sir, we have not received. Shushan, he's talking about different handout. Of this case, it, like that. It is part no, of no, the course. Just... It is part of the course. If you go to go to day four. There are presentations and there are handouts. Okay, I have sent you have sent in the WhatsApp. Is there in the WhatsApp now? It's not not clear. It is not clear. Sir, you have sent it to me. Long back, sir. I sent it to you twice, actually. No, no. By WhatsApp, sir. No, not yet. Just give me a minute. Is the one Deepak is the manager at JB Incorporated. That's the one exactly. Yeah. I have again, sir. Is it clear now? Uh, 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 yes, Apurvaji, if you could, uh, yeah, you have sent it in the group only. Great. It's there. All right. It's not very clear. Sir. Yeah, can you share it in PDF? Um, sure, just give me a minute. I will convert it to PDF and uh, send it off. Here. Give me a couple of minutes while I convert it to PDF and I will send it across. No problem. And it has been so should take a minute for it to kind of register out there. Yeah, I'm just putting it in the group, sir. You sent to me. It 
it is put, sir, in the group. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> And it's opening well. Can everybody read it now? Yeah, very much. Thanks. So what you've got is, uh, if you look at, you know, where am I? Your cases are from page 19 onwards. You've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cases. All right. Uh, what I'd like you to do is in your respective groups, discuss these cases. So room one will do case one, room two will do case two, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, what, what we'll do is once you've discussed this, we will come back and do a quick debrief of each of the cases. Fair enough. I will give you 10 minutes to get into your groups, finish this, and then step back. Will that work with everybody? Yep. Small little case list. Each is just about a paragraph. You should be able to work through it. The ones who are handling case nine may actually want to refer case eight also. Just a little disclaimer there. Right? So each uh, case is independent of the other case, no, sir? Largely, yes. But the 8th and the ninth are actually kind of related in a small manner. Okay. Yeah. So you may okay. want to refer case 8 for those who are doing case 9. That's the only disclaimer I've got. What I'm going to do is, in the meantime, I'm just going to put myself on mute and go and grab myself some well-earned water. I will see you all in exactly 10 minutes outside of the breakout rooms, right? Uh, the break? Break, breakout rooms have not been created I, yet. I am opening them right now. Okay. They've been opened. Hello. I Hello. think all are back now. Hello. All are back. Awesome. Great. So, team one, your case, Deepak is a manager at JB Inc. He prefers to have a hands-on approach on a daily basis. He spends a significant amount of time with each of his team members, instructing them what to do at each step of the way. At times, he gets frustrated and does the team member's job himself while they watch. He is happy only when team members do exactly what he says. I don't think I should read any further. What style does he tend to use? It's a, a style one because he, is, uh, he wants that his people does exactly what he asks for or what he needs, not left, not right. And when it's not done, he's doing himself to get the work done. And for the newcomer, it's good, you know, but the person who are experienced, they, they feel, you know, restrictive, or they complain sometime. Right. So if we see the complete case, it looks like it's a style one. Right. And for him to be effective, what should he actually do? Uh, maybe, you know, he can ask his, the other people who are experienced to help with the new newcomer. Okay. All right. That's a nice one. So he could move either to a style two or a style three. You know, get the more experienced yeah. person to work with them and do all of that. So he can can actually mm -hmm. start helping the others improve. Yes, uh, Sushil? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. So, good one. All right. Uh, I have another message over here that says, is fear good for a leader? I think a leader needs to be um, free to get more from the team. There's a very thin layer between manager and leader. All right. Uh, so first question, is fear good for a leader? Well, I think uh, to some extent you should, right? Have some level of fear in terms of both your own and the team's performance. Um, a leader needs to be free to get more from the team. Well, the leader needs to get more from the team to be free. Let me put it that way. Okay. Um, the last one, thin line between a manager and a leader. Yes, uh, there is a fair amount of distinction between the two. And uh, the leader would normally, all right, stay on top of things and have some amount of uh, 
control over things, even though they're operating from behind the lines, so to speak. But a manager just basically manages operations. A, a manager does not produce leaders. A leader produces leaders, if I may put it that way. I hope that answers your question. All right, cool. Great. Uh, moving on to the next case with team two. Anita is a manager at YVI Incorporated. Whenever she tries to get a job done, she first consults with the team members. She takes inputs from various team members and stuff like that. So what style does she tend to use? Team two, what have you got? I think it is a uh, style two. Mm -hmm. Since she takes inputs from all the team members and then bases that inputs after careful consideration, then she uh, decides the course of action and then uh, gives it to the team member for execution. Okay. Now there's a secondary part to this, right? While team members are generally appreciative of her approach, they sometimes feel that she wastes their time by getting all of them involved when it wasn't really necessary. So what could she do to be more effective? Maybe she could uh, uh, not uh, not go go with every team member mm -hmm. rather than you know uh, going with every team member. She could uh, maybe just look at the key members whom she would have you know kind of identified for the job and then take their opinions. Right. Than, yeah, yeah. And, and maybe just applicable to that team member's role if that task yeah. is pertaining to that right and yeah. i yeah. i just like to take a minute to share an example you know, there's this uh well a good friend of mine a classmate from school actually who had asked me to help him out with his uh his factory and you know we were setting up another place at one time and i noticed a very strange thing every morning he would come and call his entire team it was actually a short small team and he would start taking off on various issues that had happened the previous day. And it had nothing to do with the person who was either in finance or an admin or in, uh, in charge of the, uh, you know, the, the, the farm that we were looking at developing and stuff like that. He would just take off on everybody for about 90 minutes. And I finally told him, I said, that's a colossal waste of time. If you've got seven people sitting here, that's 1.5 into seven. You just wasted 10 and a half hours, which is more than one man day. You got an issue with the person who's in design, talk to the person in design, sort it out, move, move on. 10 minutes, you're done, right? And individually, talk to them and move on. This is not something that you should spend your entire time. Unfortunately, style one leader, not more than style two, high command, high control. And that's where he is. So it doesn't work very well all the time. So good one on that. Team three, yours is Mary is a manager at MNO Incorporated. She needed to analyze a set of reports a manager center, wanted to delegate the job. However, she called for a meeting and explained to the team that the job needs to be done, then asked for their recommendations. You know, meeting became chaotic. However, Mary was patient and managed to steer the meeting well. Now, towards the end, she made a decision on who would do the job and how it would be done. What style was she using here? Uh, basically, she is using uh, style S2, high directive and high uh, supportive. This is what uh, I feel. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, because initially she has taken uh, everybody in the confidence and uh, discussed the things. But situ when situation get uh, chaotic, then uh, uh, the, what, her ultimate decision is not provided over there, but uh, it seems that she has used her directive powers and high directive, high supportive. This is what I feel. Okay. Um, anybody have come up with S2 is because uh, we felt that uh, she decided with the inputs that she got from the team and then uh, she had she listened to everyone and then finally influenced the decision based on the uh, discussion and then uh, she was highly directive as well. And, uh, because towards the end, she directed who has to finish the job. That is why we came up with S2. All right. Um, you know, um, good thought. S2 is definitely there to some amount. If you look at it, she actually tried an S3, did not kind of follow it through very well, which is why she moved into an S2. Right? Now, how could she have been more effective with this? I think in this case, she was very effective. In fact, uh, she had to go go take S2 route only is what we felt generally. Yes, uh, she could have uh, probably uh, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, uh, like since I mean, why she did not get uh, went to the team member to ask for the decision because it was going chaotic. The entire thing was uh, complete chaos when the discussion was going on. That is why she took a route wherein she decided who has to do what has to be done. Okay. Let's sir, I have a point sir. here. Sir. Yes. Sir. When, yes. Uh, when in the team members, uh, each one has a independent uh, thoughts or independent ideas. Mm -hmm. They are not coming to a common point mm -hmm. where they have the conflict of interest. So right. in that case, obviously, it ca they cannot go by S3. Ultimately, uh, because it, uh, ultimately they have to, uh, at that point of time, the leader has to pitch in and he, they have, the leader has to take a decision. So that right. is why uh, it uh, it came from S3 to S2. So that's what I feel here. So he has done that role effectively only, I would say, rather. Okay. So, yes, go ahead, please. Somebody else wanted to say something. What I feel after uh, answering your question, what I feel that she may have identified some two or three persons who might uh, who she might think would be capable of doing it and would have supported them and took a decision that's what she could have done better in uh... you know what pushkar you're spot on right ideally for her to have been more effective in using style 3 okay what she could have done as a good leader ideally you should have identified who is a good person to handle this task in your team Correct? Yes, sir. Typically, you should be there. Even if it's one or maybe two people, you have a discussion with just one or two, take inputs, you know, guide them on that, and then send assign the task to one person. And that's how she could have been more effective. You're spot on rather than bringing the entire team and allowing that chaos to happen. Spot on. Amazing answer. Very nice. Just to oh. clue from your example. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, there was somebody uh, else who wanted to say something. Yeah. yeah. So ideally, she should have done S3, right? Ideally, yes. Ideally. Okay. I just got a hint from the first first two sentences that she was actually thinking of S4, but then because of the situation, she slipped into S2 and then S1, something like that. Um, okay. So she would have delegated the task still. That's still an S4. So that's step two. Okay. Now, the challenge is from an S2 to an S4, if you're going to move in these two directions, it can become a little confusing for your team member. On one hand, you're taking inputs, but you're taking decisions on your own, and then you're delegating a task. Now, what happens as a team member? I don't know if I can take certain decisions when I'm doing that task. So what's going to happen? I'm going to keep coming back to you for help. So have you effectively delegated to me? No, right? But if you had used only a pure style three, not slipped into a style two, and then delegated the task to me, my ability of decision-making on the task would have been a lot better. Right? And I won't keep coming back to you for every little problem I encounter. I'll take a decision and then tell you, hey, this is the decision I took. Does that resonate with you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Great. All right. We're doing well. We may be running short on time, but we're doing well. All right. Case four, Nita is a member of Nitin's team. One day she approached him, problem she was facing, couldn't help in deciding an option to choose, heard her out, blah, blah, blah. Now, what style was Nitin using? So style, uh, style three. Absolutely, style three. Very well said. She was being very supportive and letting her decide, like letting her make the decision by guiding her. Correct. Correct. Very well answered. Right. Let's move to case five. Santos is excellent sales skill. He was recently promoted team leader. You know, some complaints started to surface about his my way or the highway kind of approach. Sheena, who was Santos's manager, decided to look into the matter, worked actively with him to help deal with various people-oriented issues, insisted in being in the meetings. What leadership style was Santosh using and what style was Sheena using with Santosh? Santosh was clearly S1 yes. because uh, uh, he was dominating and uh, I mean, because of that some problems arose yes. and Sheena tried to help her, help him out and uh, but she also turned out to be dominating factor there and uh, I think the, her style was S2 there. Okay, do you think it was more of an S3 style that she was using? Is it possible? 
Uh, I think it is more of S3. Look at it this way. All right. Just, just hear me out for a second and look at it this way. As a as as a supervisor, you come into my meetings, my discussions, you observe, you don't say anything. Right? Then you call me aside and you say, hey, Harish, you know what? During the meeting, I saw this happen. Do you think you could have done this differently? Now, I'm starting to think, was I aggressive? Was I pushy? Was I doing something inaccurate or inappropriate? So what are you doing? You're effectively starting to coach me on this and say, hey, you know what? If you had done this in this manner, what do you think would have been the output? I'm now starting to think a little different. Are, are you all connecting with that? I think uh, what the Satosh has to be receptive to that. You see, Sheena is imposing. Uh, you see, she is trying to dominate because she's she started giving instructions to to Santosh. So that is the little gap which makes uh, something between S two and S three. So Point I think there can be a difference of opinion on that. I agree. Sure. Point taken. You, you're, you're right. That there are chances that she could slip into an S2 where she sees that he's not following certain things effectively. Yeah. All right. That can happen. So, you know what? Hey, Santosh, when you're in a meeting, I think you need to have your agenda in place first. Exactly. Now, that's an instruction that I'm giving you because I've seen you not have this thing, right? Ideally, yeah. you should have had the sense to do it on your own, Santosh, but you've not done it. So, here's an instruction. So, that could be an S2 style also. Can happen. Okay, good. All right, sixth one. Team six. Jitin was one of the most popular managers in the office. All his team members were completely free to do what they wanted when they wanted. Right? All he expected was results. What style was he using? Yeah, it was uh, style four. And so the entire team agreed for that. Uh, I think so he had confidence in his team and his team was delivering it. But the only caution was I think so there was no clarity. There should be a review mechanism for style four. If he's delegating it, I think so he should have his own mechanism of reviewing whether the teams are performing well or not. So I uh, believe, we assume, I think so he should be doing it and, and he has confidence in his team. So with limited data, we will assume that he has, you know, gone ahead and, uh, you know, put in some tracking mechanisms. But otherwise, yes, the tracking mechanism is extremely crucial. Otherwise, the entire thing can fall flat. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. Case seven. Um, actually, seven, eight, and nine are actually connected. Susan re recently recruited at a manager level. She came with about 20 years' experience in sales. Her manager felt she was, uh, you know, he was quite excited and uh, ensured that he spent a significant amount of time explaining the job, kept close tab on what she was did, and had frequent reviews with her. What style was Anil using with Susan? Uh, we discussed in a group and... Uh... Sorry, I'm not audible. Now you are. Okay. So we discussed and uh, initially it is S2 because she joined newly and uh, Anil was providing all the uh, direction and support. And uh, later on, it should be, it should move to S4 because she is quite experienced. But uh, as uh, we could read that he was reviewing uh, and he was answering questions. So in some part, it's XP also because coaching and uh, reviewing the work. Okay, fair enough. So it looked like an S1 and an S2 in the beginning. Uh, mostly S2, uh, then S3, and it should reach to S4 because she is experienced. Fair enough. Okay. Sir, uh, sorry to uh, yeah. disturb you again. Uh, any new person join, uh, can we take it as a thumb rule? It is only a style one approach or uh, because he, he may, may not be knowing about the job. Somebody has to uh, tell him that this is how it has to be done. So can it be uh, taken as a thumb rule? It is only uh, by default. It is a style one approach or uh, it okay. will deviate situation Good. to situation. Good question. So the the way I would probably answer that, uh, let's say there's an experienced person joining the team. My style one with them would probably be on how the organization functions, who are you to kind of look forward to for certain issues. That would be my style one. Process, who do you communicate with on what, et cetera, et cetera. That would be my style one approach. As far as the rest of the work goes, I would probably do a style two to style three, and I would oscillate between those two. 
does that answer your question uh, but uh, if it is a senior most position or uh, middle level to senior most even uh, the otherwise they will come with uh, the uh, the communication uh, skill the soft skill also they will possess so in that case also it will uh, you will uh, tend to stick to your uh, s1 uh, role or it will come down the, the the quantum of s1 will drop drop yeah it will address only those areas which are necessary okay so to some extent s1 will be there that's what you are trying to say okay Always. Okay, okay. Okay. For you to go out here, you can't access this zone. You need to, you know, use this to go to this particular area. Right. This is how you will, you know, do your reimbursement. You are telling the person. Right. Okay. So okay. that will become the S one part. The right. work part will be an S two, S three, and you know, over a period of time, kind of get into an S four, hopefully. Okay. Does that address your uh, question? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Good. Let's look at the eighth one very quickly. In a couple of months, Susan got a hang of the job, and uh, they started, and uh, sorry, Anil started re returning to reduce his frequency of interviews. At the point, uh, a point came when she was handling the entire portfolio, and Anil would rarely see Susan. What style is Anil using with Susan now? Teammate. Okay. Komal, we can't hear you, hear you right now. You're on mute. Let's see. It is a style four. Uh, what we think is because uh, there is a, a low direction and uh, a low support. Initially, um, uh, they might have used. Uh, uh, S3 because uh, after uh, reviews they may have given support, but uh, as they got uh, uh, Susan was handling the entire portfolio, there is a very less interaction, so it is style four. That's what we think. pretty much. You, you folks are pretty right on that front. All right, team nine, new client Anil was the account manager needed to ensure they implement a solution they had sold to the client. Obvious choice was Susan. However, before delegating the job, he had a meeting to get an opinion on how the job ought to be done, had a discussion with a couple of the other team members, and then decided on a course of action. Uh, it was a uh, style three where uh, it was sure like uh, the job was meeting with son, but uh, oh. yeah, uh, uh, he had a discussion with him and has his opinion. All right, sorry, lost you. Ajay. So it, yeah, it was style three, like uh, what I was saying, because he had a discussion with uh, Suzanne and then other team member also to have their opinion. And, but he was sure, like uh, with the competency of the Suzanne, that uh, task should go to uh, the Suzanne. Okay. But uh, yeah, if we uh, just if read I was it, to tell you, he oscillated. If I was to tell you that he oscillated between style two and three, would you agree with that? uh style to where uh, more uh, uh, directive and more uh, supportive uh, he was not a directive seems to be here in fact because he's just if you go by that what has been given in this case is uh, just he had he their opinion uh, or his susan opinion and the other member opinion so he's he was not directive and then want but if we want to decide on the course of action then definitely i to uh, give that element of uh, direction also where it's uh, just uh, yeah second style also come into the picture right so yeah it is kind of going between the two styles a little bit you know, kind of jumped into style two for a minute and came back it's almost like that right right okay great so um does this give you folks uh, a kind of a, an overview of how leadership styles can be used differently varying depending on the situation depending on the people does this now help you connect the four leadership styles and your leadership styles with various people in the organizations that you work with yeah, theoretically yes okay uh What's the piece that's not coming across as practically? Because practical situations different. I mean, these are altogether different things. When I mean, you go into practical things, each leadership style 
you see that the circumstances will decide what kind of leadership style is required and how rationally one behaves in a particular situation that decides the style not the i mean these are the parameters okay we have divided into four styles that is fine but uh, later on we can put it into any of these brackets but ultimately the situation and the practical scenario will decide you know exactly you could be more right okay you couldn't be more right about this yeah now like i said sticking to one particular style is not the objective how do i flow okay how do i manage this whole thing with a different individual with a different task with an experienced individual and a new task with an experienced individual a known task and a high visibility scenario i got to oscillate i got to keep moving around so the idea over here is to ensure that we don't stick to one style right but we recognize that these are the four different styles i need to kind of move around so hence i'm saying you couldn't be more right yeah the only thing is try not to slip back into your dominant style so i've got uh, rajshekar saying uh, you know uh, slowly moving into original or natural style which happens okay um it's it's very natural it's a natural tendency that you slip back into your comfort zone of being an s1 or an s2 or an s3 or an s4 but you got you need to kind of just be cognizant of the fact that hey you know what at this point i should not take a step back and think am i doing this the right way is this the right thing to do at this point or should i try and change it's just that take that 30 seconds or just 20 seconds to step back play it in your head and say okay no maybe i need to change it no maybe this works that's the only point to be sure right sometimes that so are we going to do this don't have the liberty of time i mean these are very crucial things you have to yeah, decide right. sometime and the time availability is the crucial issue and in such a scenario how one reacts how one acts these are i mean very very subjective things. folks am i audible yes yes all right good great um so hey we've been working for quite some time little over an hour actually and uh, i have about 45 minutes remaining my question do you want to take a quick 10 minute breather and come back yeah 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 we take a break on it that's it right. it's it's fine we can go <laughs> we can go ahead actually we can go ahead sir we can go we ahead we already had a break before your session okay we have a happy to go till the hours <laughs> we can maybe go maybe sir has to uh, take a break <laughs> okay then i'm i'm good. somebody said 2 minutes somebody said yes it's okay let's do this there are a couple of us who want to just do a stretch break let's do this compromise 5 minutes back in the room okay okay sir good idea whatever the time in your watch please be back in 5 minutes i have only one question maybe we can yes. take it after the thing actually uh, when it comes to a partner or uh, the main uh, people as such mm. what sort of a uh, style have Uh, is it going to depend on different roles or is it going to depend on uh, uh, how we should take it back okay good question i will answer it in a very short way you need to attend another workshop of mine okay, okay. which rajshekar said this profile analysis will help this mr chandrashekar you are absolutely right rajshekar that was going to be my response saying you need to understand the disc profile when you're working with partners and people across at, at a senior level at a peer level this profile is another thing that would really help you which is what the disc that um, uh, dr bell was talking about earlier okay okay uh, we could discuss that later maybe offline you and i can talk about it and i can take you through that separately that's not an issue right so <coughs> cool with that hoping that i've addressed your question partially at least let's do a quick 5 minute bio break and come back Okay, can uh, everybody see my screen? Oh yes. Yes, yes, yes we can. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we we spoke about leadership styles, but uh, on there's a flip side to it also, and that's got to do with your follower styles, right? 
Without a follower, there's no leader. Without a leader, there's no follower. I think that's a very apt saying. Now, team members, they operate on two key dimensions. Like if the leader operates on directive and supportive, team members operate along two key dimensions, which is competence and commitment, right? Competence is basically the ability, the skill, et cetera, that the, they, they possess the, the necessary skills to do the job and they've got you know, an understanding of the process and everything else. And the commitment is the willingness. Question, which out of these two is the most difficult one to work with? Commitment. Absolutely right. You can always help a person gain a skill. Gaining commitment is extremely difficult. Yes. Right. And it's very taxing on the leader to start motivating people so much. And attitude. Yeah. Yeah. So similarly, like you've got the leadership styles, you've got follower styles. All right. With commitment on your x-axis going from low to high and competence on your y-axis going from low to high again. So let's look at the C1, which talks about high commitment, but low competence. Very motivated, demonstrates willingness to learn, will look toward leader for constant guidance, right? On the other hand, you have C2 over here, very motivated, again, the commitment levels are very high, demonstrates willingness to learn, and will cooperate with the leader to ensure that the job gets done. The third style, is this person is low on motivation, but has got high level of competence. Now, when do you normally see somebody like this? Not well rewarded. In failures? Uh, I'm sorry, the second answer was what? Yes, seeing failures is afraid. You know, it could be, you're right. So one is, I have not been rewarded, like was rightly said, or I have not got my promotion or, you know, my, my increments are not really that great or whatever is one part of it. Satisfied. Yeah. The, on the other hand, uh, I have failed at a task, but the environment for failing is not there. You know, to build that um, safe environment where I'm allowed to fail, maybe that doesn't exist in the team. I get reprimanded for failing, but not appreciated for taking a risk and learning out of it. That's another way that can happen. Okay. The C4 style, low commitment, low competence. This is fundamentally redeployment to another organization. It's not experience for in the doctor. I'm sorry, we're getting a lot of background noise from someone over here. So here it's basically low motivation. I'm not willing to learn. I'm not going to be cooperative. I'm going to spread negativity, all of that. Okay. So that's just really how this works. And this is a person you could do without. Do we have any questions on this? So how do you correlate with the uh, S chart with the C chart? I'm going to come to that in a minute. <laughs> you know, I, I really love it when you ask questions, which I'm going to answer in a few a few minutes. But before more questions, that, sir, with regard to the previous one. Yes. Uh, like uh, once we look at the identification, what is the technology we try to identify? Uh, like we had a questionnaire for uh, for us to work on our lead styles. Is there something like that we can identify here as well? Uh, actually, no, there is no follower style assessment that has been done largely because uh, it can be a biased one. Additionally, it can also be one that is based on uh, recent incidents. It can be very incident critical, right? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, one more thing that uh, C3, you gave an example, no, when a person is not rewarded enough, yeah. but uh, I can put it like a pe person who is a overqualified and uh, uh, he actually uh, follow the style of uh, dominant leadership. 
so he he may also fit into that c3 right good so let me ask you this let, let me flip your question around a little bit you're a highly qualified person right i mean uh, being a ca is is not an easy thing it's 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 a, you know it's a great qualification to have if i had to hire you to manage my uh, you know one small company's accounts right would it be my fault or yours no it depends uh, even though if you offer uh, it is a uh, finally the decision is mine no whether to join or not correct so one is your decision but also as a person who's hiring yeah i should make sure that a does are you the right fit b do i have opportunities in the near future for you if i don't i shouldn't even be offering you see certain things which may not uh, manifest during the interview process when subsequently he comes on board so we will come to know that uh, he is not fit for that uh, particular uh, post or mm -hmm. role okay. so so that means uh, it might be a wrong choice uh, at that time they may feel that it might be a wrong choice to uh, select correct to select this candidate right so in that case uh, neither uh, until he goes out we cannot we have to stick with that person right so again it's how you interview the interviewing skills then comes into play because have i done my interview correctly have i thought about the fitment correctly have i thought about the role and the next you know the next steps for this particular role all that comes into play right at the end of the day i have come to you for a job or you have come to me for a job if i haven't made those if i haven't put those things in my head if i haven't thought about these things then uh, it is my issue i mm -hmm. should have thought about it because i am hiring you yeah right i am making a commitment to you that you know what you're going to be a good fit over here and you and i are going to work well together but if i don't live up to my end of the bargain you're going to turn around and say hey this guy is uh, you know he's full of hot area right yep right i got you for point okay cool thanks All right so um ladies and gentlemen one quick round on the uh followership styles we've got a series of cases for you again this is um page 23 and 24 okay once again we have nine cases um let me just stop this for a second and set up new breakout rooms this time okay okay i'm going to assign the uh, rooms <clears throat> just like the last time so room 1 ananya thakkar and team hence case 1 similarly for room 2 akshay kulkarni and team case 2 room 3 amrish korea room 4 abdul salam room 5 anubhav sharda oops hang on a second uh room 6 kamlesh tibrewal wow this happened the second time i think room 7 anand barge and team room 8 agnal disuza and room 9 we have ravindra and team each room according to the room number please work on the case these are fairly easy i'm going to give you 6 minutes to work on these cases discuss and come back opening all rooms you have 6 minutes to, uh, page number 23 case studies yes 23 and 24 okay okay yep okay so actually you know what i'll be a nice guy i'll give you 8 minutes so 8 minutes back in the room all rooms open uh, uh, sir we are back okay awesome i've got ready three people that's nice uh cool so team one let's go with case one that you've got reji was struggling with the latest assignment that his manager has assigned to him although he shows keen interest he is not able to prioritize the numerous tasks therefore he keeps slipping on his deadlines what's the problem start wrong that's one on it's even because uh better because he was uh, keen to learn but uh, 
he was not able to meet his deadlines so right. we go with c1 so um high commitment but low competence low competence yes right yes okay if you were his leader what style would you use with him uh this question is open to everybody not just you yeah. you are on mute Uh, no, somebody is muting everybody now, so that's why. Yes, yes. Let's go. Okay, I. Uh, it would be uh, S one. Uh, it's more for direction because he's Absolutely. new and he's low on competency, so it will be S two to S two. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So great, good one. Okay. Team two, Paul has been in Lena's team for the last three years. During these years, master the job has been a good performer. However, in the last couple of instances, he slipped on his deliverables. Doesn't seem to be able to focus on his job, though he is perfectly capable of doing it. What is Paul's style? Yeah. So in the team, we had discussed, and we came out that he is actually flowing from C two to C three, and then if this continues, he will slip into C four. and conclusively we have c3 that currently is in c3 stage okay i wish you wouldn't call it c3 stage it makes him sound like he's ill <laughs> <laughs> i mean his he's, uh, he's very competent <laughs> to do the point job point of no return <laughs> point of no return basically <laughs> right But, uh, um, look it's like this right the, the, he's a good performer which means his competence levels are very high okay and yes. uh his his commitment now the thing is he's not able to focus on his job so yeah maybe his commitment is going down a little bit okay so fair enough let's say he's in a c3 what style would you use with him if you were his leader okay i would go for s3 style because uh, he he is very competent he doesn't need my direction as such but what he needs is my support because there where uh, his commitment is lacking so i would go for s3 and uh, because we didn't discuss this i would want okay. if there are other views for the group members they can come up you don't have to worry about not having discussed it your application is 100% accurate okay and that's what matters right yeah Okay, that's what matters. This is really nice to see that you are you are able to connect it, and then that's that's really important. Okay, great, good. So this has been good stuff. Ready is an extreme is extremely passionate about his work. Takes a lot of initiative. Keeps himself updated and pays attention to details. Takes pride in doing excellent work. What's his style? It's a C two where he is on high on. Uh... uh competencies and high high on commitment both like he is very passionate and uh, uh, taking his pride of the excellent work so clearly like uh, he is at a c2 from both the highs uh, right. right and uh, from the leadership style it should be as four where uh, because he is on a high on both the side so we really need to give less direction and uh, less uh, supportive from that uh, point of view absolutely right delegate the task with certain deadlines yep. pack it and you have no worries with this person Right, so good. Hey, I love this. You folks are getting the entire hang of it so quickly. It's amazing. It's really very nice. Okay, team four. Nitin always has a glazed look in his eyes when working on his current assignment. Knowledge seems to be shallow. Takes too many breaks. I don't need to read this any further. Team four, what's your assessment of this individual? Yeah, we we find uh, him to be in the C four, uh, you know, follower style, uh, sir, All with right. a low commitment and low competence. Correct. Uh, totally uninterested in the work. Absolutely. Now, what style of leadership would you use with this person? Yeah, if he go for a leadership style, it will be you know uh, that's S two, that's a high direction and a high support. Absolutely. He, he, definitely something wrong with him, so we need to support him to bring him up. Spot on. See, the the S two style is also sometimes known as a sell style, so you need to sell the task to the individual at times. and show them what's in it for them okay got it huh? really what it talks about so if they see the uh, work for me it works fairly well uh, there was a question from somebody yeah i i have a question uh, so i have been discussing with the team also 
what is wrong with firing a person who is in C4? He is uh, low. He doesn't have any competence and no commitment at all. Why should we have uh, have him in a team? Unless uh, he's a burden as such. All right. My question: Who hired him? You or me? You hired me, right? Yeah. So work with me first before you throw me out. I'm not saying don't throw him out. Okay. So we have to give give a try on him and then uh, throw him out. That's what uh, you're saying. Yeah, yeah you, you, you work with me. You have like to you, you you try and work with me after a period of time. After having documented conversations with me, setting up small mini okay. action plans, all right, to help me get better. If I still don't get better, sack me. Okay. Okay. But if you don't put in any attempt, hmm. then why do you hire me? Okay, I get it. Yeah. All right. And also, first we have to we have to understand is it our fault or his fault? Maybe the resources aren't in place at times. That's another thing. Maybe the environment is not so good for him. Maybe he we, he or she is used to a different environment. Multiple things. Absolutely right. Okay, yeah. good. I like these questions. Team five. Stanley expressed interest in leading an independent project multiple times to his manager. At last, when the opportunity came, uh, manager assigned in the project, been very diligent, sends reports on time. By and large, project is on track. What is his follower style? Nice. Great. What's his follower style? Team five. I think team five, they already answered. I think you first asked five and then came to four. We can move to six. I did not talk about Stanley. Team five, I haven't heard from you all. I finished with the fourth one. This is a different I think we missed a leader in our group. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, was, uh, question number five, it was uh, what we understand it's C2, where yeah. he's highly committed and high, highly competent. Absolutely right. Again, great. Uh, Eric, sixth one. Eric was recently promoted to his new position, extremely happy, eager to make his mark in his new role, looking for clear directions from his manager on how to proceed, and has been asking numerous questions. What's the follower style? His style is C2. As he got promoted, he has the competence and he already shown his commitment. That's why he got promoted. So he is uh, in C2 style. Okay. Then my question, Ravi, is why is he asking his manager so many questions if he's very competent? Because he has to commit himself for whatever the expectations are there. Once he gets the expectation clear, he can definitely do the next job. Okay. Hang on a second. Now think about the situation. I have been very competent while working with you. So you said, hey, you know what? Harish is a great guy. Harish needs a promotion. You promoted me. Okay. I'm not ready. I'm not competent at the next lower, at the next level of which you promoted me to. Hence, I'm coming back to you and asking you a lot of questions. So what style am I on? <laughs> Asking question doesn't mean that uh, he's not committed. So we discussed it that way. So uh, I mean, asking question comes from his commitment. So he want to do a right. little better. So I'm, yeah. so I'm high on commitment, but I'm not competent in the new role. Hence, I am using a C1 follower style. It is not a C2. So does asking question, uh, the person who is competent to won't ask, should not ask question or won't ask question or questions will be, is that, is that something like that? Uh, no, I'm not saying that. Look at the situation over here again. He is looking for clear directions from his manager on how to proceed and has been asking numerous questions. Okay. So he's asking questions about the fund fundamentals of uh, work. Right. So what does that okay. mean? Which means the new role that you have given me now is great. I'm happy about it, but I'm not very clear of what I'm supposed to do in this new role. I don't know how to go forward, which means my commitment level is high, but my competence level at this particular new role, this elevated role you've given me is not so high. Okay. 
got here. No, but the fact is, he has got promoted. On what basis was the promotion done? Correct. So, what basis was the promotion done? The promotion was done on the basis that Harish was good in his previous role. I have been an outstanding performer in my previous role, so you decided to promote me. But that doesn't mean that you promote. You also kind of assess the capabilities whether the, the, that person is uh, able to handle the role next, right? And 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 because he is new, he is seeking directions. If he was, you know, he's Ideal competent. Scenario. Sorry. Ideal scenario. What you're saying is normally when you would promote someone to the next level, you would see okay competencies at current level, great. Next level competencies. If there are five of them. Is the person good at at least two or three of them or decently there? If the person is, then you would want to promote them. Ideal scenario does not happen in real life. Sometimes you get pushed into that and say, hey, you know what? I don't have a choice. I got to, I got to send this guy out. I need somebody there. So you push me. I'm saying, okay, I'm willing to take the new role on. I'm willing to take the challenges. But hey, boss, I need direction. I need guidance. To see one is the... Oh. At this, at this current juncture, in this scenario, it's a C one. Okay. Okay, we got three more to go. Very quickly, uh, Freya was contemplating leaving the company. It's been just three months since she joined. First job, she was expecting good work. However, she felt no one, least of all the manager, had any time for her. She felt she was dripping with no direction. What is her style? Yeah, Anand here. C4, yeah. in our opinion, because she was very low on confidence at the same time, at times she was also negative. And that is why she was thinking about the quitting the job. Hold on a second. I'm going to raise, bring this up over here. Now, I'd like you to just follow a few things. First job. First, mm -hmm. Expecting to do good work. Commitment levels are high. Mm -hmm. Initially, correct? Least of all, her manager had any time for her. She was drifting with no direction. Uh -huh. Now tell me. If you ask me, this is a case where the manager has gone into an abdication style. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Hence, a person who has joined you with a high level of commitment, you have managed to move this person. And I say you, I don't mean you specifically. I'm talking about the leader uh -huh. or the manager. <clears throat> has managed to move this person to a state where they're just drifting in the system, not knowing what to do. Uh -huh. So now... Still, since she's in the, you know, since she has joined newly and she has only, you know, uh, this is her first job and she's having no interest to learn more. Even if her manager is not cooperating with her, she could, she would, you know, learn from other team members. But instead of that, she's, uh, you know, choosing an option to go away. Even though one point is right that the manager is not concentrating on her. But still, in this in the category of C1 to C4, she'll be there in the C4 category. My personal take in this kind of a scenario, because I'm largely, when it comes to leadership, I'm more people-oriented. Not to say that I don't focus on tasks, but personally, I tend more towards the person, the people part of it. I would say, initially came in as a C1, and in spite of being a manager, this individual turned out to be a damager and moved into a C4. All right. Agree. Yeah, this is what I would personally see as far as this case goes. But you're right. Finally, end of the day, she does move to a C4. Right. Uh, because in that case, we can uh, clearly see right uh, that person who joined new, he joined with a high expectation and the motivation, but he needs clearly some direction. And then, uh, uh, but with why I think applying. S4, maybe, you know, because as a manager, I have not given, uh, in this case, not given a complete, uh, you know, direction or the support, that person has moved to C4 directly, right, where uh, I think that clearly the mismatch of the leadership, which was required at the joining uh, at the time of this person. Yes, spot on, great. Very so nice. is it like the person who uh, was actually in C1 and but 
lack of direction she moved to the c4 correct yeah okay this Got is it. called the failed leadership style which is yeah. more possible to say boss chhod do yahan pe kuch nahi hone wala hai so that's why she became very negative and thinking yeah. about quitting the job so i want to go that's a three months i've been doing nothing it's just frustrating the easiest way to lose an employee is don't give them anything to do right don't give them work it's very difficult to justify your existence they go uh, narayan says went through this early in my career <laughs> so you've got one person over here so here the case refers to the manager to the, the person who is actually she is going to be get trained right okay because there are several several layers you cannot like the manager manager is also manager but he is not managing the the person down the line so the person who is actually managing is responsible for the person i agree so in this case is that immediate manager that we are talking about her manager right when you saying her manager is the immediate boss now i come to a question suppose yeah. a manager is having 10% person mm-hmm. uh, team and then he gives an instruction that the new joiny is your responsibility okay yeah so normally that the guy who is or guy or a girl whoever it is should be able to give a good training to those those people yes the new yes. trainees yes yeah and then it's better to move the people from different department before they go on the actual thing so suppose if you are suppose it's a bank then it's not just to give one type of training it's to show that what is correlated to it that you are doing first running of the core job then what is going to impact where it is going to go ahead and what from where it is going to come so that they have clear idea so let me let me just flip this a little bit all right what we used to do when we used to assign people to how would you say loosely if i would use the word mentor people into the team right mentor or or uh, get new hires um kind of up to speed with the team we used to also do a skip level saying that hey how are things going with you are you getting enough time that's my job as a supervisor if i am not checking with both the person i have assigned to help the new person come up to come up the learning curve as well as the new person whether they are getting enough time then i fail as a manager even if i have assigned it and delegated it to somebody else to develop them it's still my responsibility it's still my team i still have hired this person i own this the ownership is mine i am accountable most of the people most of the people don't open up they don't they don't come up and say no my my person who is training me is not enough or qualified or not giving me enough time because they are junior that is what i experienced in the team that the junior most team member they are not vocal they are never vocal correct and that's largely because we probably ask very direct closed ended questions like so are you getting enough time from the person the answer is yes because it's a yes or no answer uh, it's a yes or no question but if i was to turn it around and say so tell me something how much time are you spending every day with this person how many hours a week now what am i getting i'm getting a quantity out there then i start asking so how, with respect to this particular process how comfortable are you i ask a couple of questions about the process to assess that that's my job right that's how i know whether the person's coming up the learning curve i can't take a yes or no as an answer and i think i'm going to get a call very soon from dr bell saying that it's time you stop the session just give me five more minutes and i'll do that thank <laughs> you thank you on so shall i shall i answer your question perfectly perfectly and precisely all right cool thank you so folks we've got two more cases to talk one more case to talk about two more actually ida is an experienced team member at present time her team was quite busy in completing a project during this time her manager had given her an additional task that needed to be done however she just wasn't getting around to it what do you think her style was in this case uh, if you look at uh, the uh, problem 
idea is uh, ida is actually a high competent high competency uh, follower as mm-hmm. she is already busy on a project but suddenly her manager has given an additional task mm-hmm. okay now maybe she is very busy with the current project and she is not able to give time for whatever reason or she is not committed to this new part task mm-hmm. so now she is in actually uh, c3 which is low commitment though high competency is there but commitment is low so i think it is uh, 3 Okay. Can I offer you another thought? Yeah, please. What if I said she goes? She's gone into C one because she is not capable of multitasking. She's not capable of prioritizing. Is it possible? Uh, yeah. It it could be possible, oh. but uh, then uh, it's a thought. I'm yeah. just saying it can go either way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then, then, then in that case, could it be also be four? Because in that case, the competency level is also low. and because she yeah, like you said she is not able to multitask her commitment also be may be low no so but people does it say that the commitment is low she is just not getting around to doing it okay so prioritization is a problem okay right i'm i'm looking at it from this side you are looking at it from that side what i'm saying is both views are correct real life you will obviously have to have a discussion and say hey what's going on right right so you from being successful really that's the conversation you want to have right right so right Ninth case. Yes, ninth case. Sorry, so in this in this case, what leadership style will work? Will it uh, S two? Over here, in this case, do, I would do an S three. S three because okay because there, yeah, I feel it is more about direction also because she is too occupied and her team is too occupied where she may need high direction, high support. So here's a thought. What if I was to sit down with Ida and tell her, "So Ida, here's what's happening. I see you're busy, but I see this thing is not happening to its fruition." Uh, my question: What's stopping you from being successful, Ida? Hey, boss. You know what? I think I've got way too much on my plate. So, Ida, what stopped you from telling me that you won't be able to do this? You know, one of the two needs to be taken away from you, boss. I wasn't sure I could tell you this, and I didn't know how it would appear. Ida, you have all the freedom to come back to me and tell me about this. Now, tell me of these two tasks that you're working on. which would you like to retain which would you like to share with somebody else and that's an s3 conversation i would have okay got it i'm sorry i'm yeah. doing a mono acting but i'm under serious pressure on time from dr bell okay no, yes, I, I, i got it <laughs> okay sir yeah. nine number sir nine number we have anonymously come up to conclusion that is, it will be slide slide uh, slide style c3 we, because uh, the she was competent being a sales person and uh, she was not willing to to take this job and uh, his uh, her manager that didn't take uh, his permission or uh, like a uh, given as a, a feeling that, that this will be a good job so uh, like uh, we felt that she is not committed so it's like a style c for me as and for from the leadership style we say say, say that the leader was c, uh, s1 and he didn't took uh, her, her her in confidence and we feel that he should uh, be the leadership style which the, the, his manager should do is the s2 rather than s1 this okay. was our take okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be very against my natural character and just give you a, a penicillin shot on this one so to speak okay uh, the point is i'm very good at a particular role but you want me to move to a different role i don't know anything about this okay i yeah. have no idea about sales i have zero commitment i have zero competence as far as that goes okay right? so that's a c4 hmm. okay because i don't know the task and i am not sure if i'm going to be successful and i'm scared aha uh-huh. but if as a supervisor you come to me and use a style two first uh-huh. where you tell the whole idea to me and you oscillate between a style style 1 2 and 3 with me you start uh-huh. working with me on all these three styles i start becoming a lot more comfortable Uh, but uh, we felt that if he was in a uh, sales sales team, so that whatever job the manager has assigned to him, he, mm-hmm. him, her, no, was a good only. So that she she can do that better. That is your feeling, but the person who is supposed to do the task is not comfortable with it. So at the end of the day, you are going to assess me on my performance, right? Uh-huh. If you are going to assess me on my performance in an area which I am not able to perform, I wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> yeah you that is that is that is your commitment towards the work not the competence you are competent but not committed 
I will not be committed also. Why would I commit myself to something where I am not competent? That's the other part. Of it. Okay. I'm, right. That's the other part. Sorry. Uh, you are saying he, she is not competent. The customer support is, is the baseline for sales because they are actually in and out talking to the, uh, to the customers, understanding the problem. So that what is sales? At the end of the day, the sales is like you are selling the, the necessity. So customer support people are the best people who knows the necessity of the people, of the, of the customer, because they are day in, day out, hearing the problems and the requirement of the customers. Correct. Right. I get that. But, and I, and I realize that a lot of people trust service people more than salespeople. Okay. Because for the sales guy, as long as I got the order, I'm good to go. Rat gai, bad gai. Okay. Mm. But the point is, okay, there are different functions altogether. There's a lot of other things involved. There's a lot of negotiation. There's a lot of benefit selling. There's a lot of, you know, um, uh, need understanding, need identification, looking at, um, you know, key accounts. How do I manage it? The entire sales gamut is there which a service person doesn't really get, right? And for a service person to walk in there and say, hey, here I am selling you a product that I actually repair. Wow, that's going to be like, wow. No, uh, I, in that case, I, let, me, let me form my question again. Mm -hmm. Who in your team, if you, uh, if you go for an upgrade or, or a promotion, will it be a new sales guy uh, for the sales or will it be the guy who is working in the customer support? It depends on the skills of the individual, the competency of that individual, whether they can manage sales or not. I would talk to the individual, do an assessment and then take a decision. I wouldn't tell them, nee, tu aja, it's okay, you're good. That's not what I would do. Mm, and, but as a manager, you know, you know the people very well, where they are competent, how they are communicating. In spite of that, I would do a proper sales assessment. I would okay. personally do a proper sales assessment. Okay. Uh, I think Neil Kandan was started with the, the, the one of our team members, Neil Kandan started with the C4, and everybody other members were opposed to it. So, Neil Kandan, you want to say something here? Oh, initially, I also thought uh, two different competencies. Then, uh, then I somewhat I also convinced that the customer service guy can uh, fit into sales guy. Now uh, it is two differently two different competencies altogether. After yeah. your explanation, they are, they are yeah. very different competencies. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So it should be a C Yeah. Even the, the behavioral profiling is very very different normally for both. Yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, that was a good session that you had on the cases. I like the banter. I like the back and forth. I like the debate. Very, very nice. Somebody asked me, mapping leader styles to follower styles. Here you go. Your answer lies here. And you have already answered it, really, if you look at it. S1, C1, right? Uh, S4, you're talking about C2. Uh, S2, you're talking about a C4. And um, S3 would map to a C3. You'll have actually answered all of this yourselves. Uh, nothing really, you know, different or new. Uh, with that, what I have for you all is, uh, this is actually there in your workbook too. Okay. So skill and will is what we spoke about. Competence and, you know, commitment. You have these situations. What you want to probably do is decide what kind of actions you're going to take when you have an employee with this scenario of will and skill okay you have uh, about four scenarios that are here please go ahead and take a look at it what i will do is because of paucity of time i will share with you maybe you could take a screenshot of this and um, you know uh, this will be available though uh, dr bell has this uh, already with him this is already there you can you can figure out what actions you need to take depending on the skill and will level, so to speak, of the um, or skill and will combination of the uh, employees that you would have on your teams. Okay, feel free to take a snapshot or a screenshot of this right now. These are the first two. And uh, these are the other two. Uh, with that, I know I've exceeded. And you know, I'm saying time for questions, but there really isn't any according to what you've shared. So Exceeded eight minutes, but I have pretty much run to the end of my session. 
leadership style need not be based on gender. Leadership style is based purely on commitment, competence. That's what it needs to be based on. Bringing in gender would not be an appropriate thing to answer the question that's there. Right. My question was actually, will the approach be different because it's a women leader? Oh, here, I want to supplement this question. Actually, it's a very brilliant question. Will the leadership style vary with gender? I don't know. I've had a couple of very kick-ass women as leaders. <laughs> I mean, they've kicked me all around. I've, I've had bosses who've been of both genders and uh, wow, yeah, sometimes uh, the ladies have actually walloped me quite a bit. You know, when we discuss the cultural issues, I want you to ask me the same question again. Cross-cultural perception management. Yeah, so that's that. So, um, yeah, folks, uh, if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Otherwise, Dr. Bell has my coordinates. Feel free to, you, you probably got my coordinates too. Feel free to write to me or call me. Uh, we, we can always have a chat. Very open to that. Uh, I think one, no. you have said very nicely. I really wanted to um, give you thank uh, about what you said. It's the leaders which develops the leaders. That is what you said. So the type of leader you are, you see the other person as similar leader. Yeah, and you it was really emulate. nice. Means you can see it through. Yeah, you emulate your boss at the end of the day. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Right. Sir, I have uh, one uh, last question. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, suppose uh, certain uh, leadership styles, it might be an autocratic, uh, like, for example, if you are in a public sector, or typically if you are in uh, the, the uh, uh, policy decisions cannot be, uh, like, it cannot be uh, at the uh, employee level, or it cannot be discussed among the uh, peers. Like it's a defense sector, for example. Okay. So, so defense sector, you know very well that it is purely, uh, uh, it is the security of the nation. So, the the that at that time it is it is only a decision at the top level. Everybody has to follow. We cannot in that case we cannot the leadership style. It is only a directive. Like you cannot involve or uh, take concurrent uh, decisions. Like so in that case that learning or the uh, person's learning will get stuck. So how a person uh, can actually uh, 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 learn or come up in the uh, next uh, phase? Is it possible or, uh, the, or it, is, it is not a fit industry for him if a person actually want to learn and move up to the next ladder? Okay, I'm guessing this question is coming more from the heart than anything else. But I'm going to go back to what Dr. Bell said at the big, a little earlier today. Where even in these sectors, decisions are not taken unilaterally. They are taken with a set of peers or with a set of people who it's going to impact. Whether it's going to impact them at the leadership level or at the teams down there. When you're building a policy in an organization, your policy is supposed to make your employees' life easy. Hence, your focus is going to be on that and you're going to have decisions based on certain amount of inputs from various elements that come in, say various functions, various elements, all of that. That's one, all right? Second, your, your question about growth in this sector. Growth is there. If you are good at what you're doing at your particular, I hate to use the word, but for lack of a better word, level, if I may call it that, and if you have shown the competency of managing or, or, or understanding what the next level demands, all right, you're good to go. That's all it is. Okay, my level plus partially what the next level is. Um, if I'm if I'm showing that kind of competency and commitment to my work, there is a high probability of me moving up the value chain, so to speak. Does it answer your question? I know I've broken it in two parts, but. Yeah, to some extent, because the more uh, this question uh, requests for uh, furthermore, inputs I have to give, and only that answer can yeah. be more precise. Yeah, so for a certain confidentiality, I have not uh, shared all the inputs. No, sir. Perfectly okay. all right. 
Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah. Shailesh, you asked again, how, or, or is that an old one that I got? No, how do you know you are a leader or a manager? Are you running around managing day-to-day -day stuff or are you doing something different with you, yourself and your team boss? <laughs> Ask yourself the question. Actually, I'm not asking, I'm asking this question because I, I somehow see that the questions coming is, is somehow, you know, not, because leader don't need to be manager, you know, your skill sets are completely different. You're thinking to grow, you are, you want to see that how you are taking your team ahead. It's different, but I ask this question for my group. Okay, fair enough. So let me give you an example of what happened in my life. I used to measure my success as a leader by the simple fact that if I'm traveling, my team doesn't call me for anything work related. I was away for close to about three and a half weeks. I had one call from my team member and that was because she had a personal issue she wanted to discuss. And that was 30 minutes. We didn't talk about work. None of my team members called me on anything work related because before I left, they said, what are we going to do for three weeks? Is it continue working or lose your job? Right? So he said, boss, what if we screw up? I said, did I ever tell you I'm going to sack you for screwing up? If you screwed up, apologize, correct it and move on in life. That's it. You're done. Show me one person in this world. Show me one leader. And I had this discussion the other day also. Show me one leader who's never made a mistake in their life. I think every leader makes mistakes. It's if they don't make mistakes, they're no, not experienced. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's that. If that's great that's session, sir. Question. You had a great session. Thanks. Thank you so much. Arish ji, it was a brilliant session. Thank Actually, you, you were involved everybody in every activity. So it was feeling as if you were talking to all of us. That's, that was absolutely brilliant, sir. Absolutely. May I request uh, CA Arun Somnaji? And may I request, uh, there are 76 available now. Let the number not uh, reduce below this so that I can pass on some messages after this. Some messages that will be clarifying your uh, next week's end program. Uh, may I request CA Arun Somnaji to please uh, uh, come and give the vote of thanks. Sure, sir. Great leaders always try to find solutions to a problem rather than finding a scapegoat. Honorable speaker of the session, um, uh, Mr. Harish Ji, respected Dean of Center of Excellence Hyderabad, Ashminder Ji, respected convener of COE, Daya Ji, and my dear, dear fellow participants, a warm good evening to everyone. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks for this session. I, on behalf of ICAI management, COE, Hyderabad management, and all the participants of this program, and on my own behalf, extend a very hearty word of thanks to the speaker of this session for gracing your important thought process and sharing with us your findings and opinion today. You spoke about various leadership style and also made us understand that each one of them are so important and might be the way forward at one or the other point in our career. Thanks a lot for such an insightful session, sir. Thanks for taking almost every individual query and deep diving into their concerns and sorting it out. I would like to thank ICAI and Center of Excellence Hyderabad for conducting such a session and give us, give all of us a chance to build and imbibe leadership quality in us. Last but not the least, a big thanks, thank you goes to all the participants for your active involvement in this session and making it a grand success. See you all, stay safe, stay home as much as possible. Keep breaking the chain, thank you. Thank you very much, sir, if you so desire uh, you may leave, but it was a very brilliant session. So thank you. Uh, sir. sir, just one thing before you leave. Yeah. Uh, can you all smile so that I can take a screenshot, like a picture? <laughs> yeah. I'll try to <laughs> input as many as possible. Okay. Jeez. Three, two, one. Cheers. All right. Another one. Again. Three, two, one. Oh, one second. One second. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> One more, three, two, one.
Okay, I think there are more people coming up. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, smile. Uh, Gopal Shah ji, your photo is here. Uh, Jamshid Adam ji, Yuva Rajesh, Durgesh Pingale and Vignesh and Shantosh English. Okay, three, two, one. Nice, amazing. Thank you so much. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For all the comments in this uh, you have to so please, the host please. rights. Please make me the host again, sir. Oh, yes, I have to make you the host. Yes, Thank I you, sir. Uh, uh, how's the Josh? Hi, sir. Hi, uh, sir. You know, I've seen a lot of smiles and a lot of uh, Josh, even at the end of a very, very, uh, you know, long time. It's nearly six hours plus, and we are all still having, you know, the energy left to talk. First thing first is the next assignment has been uploaded today. I would have uploaded yesterday, but I got a, uh, a message from one of the participants that please do not upload one day before because then our mind gets diverted. So I felt, yes, it, it did. Uh, it was sensible. So I uploaded today. Now, in this, what we have done is you have been made into two different wings. The first wing will look after the case study one. And the second wing will look after case study two. Wing, I mean, is group one to group five is wing one, which will look after case study one. And group six to group 10 will look after case study two. Now, when we say look after means that within your groups, you will identify a representative first. That is the first thing you will do. So it is not going to be the leader. It is not that all 100 have to submit. I would be expecting only 10, 10 presentations or answers, but answers in the form of presentation or even word document choice is yours because you actually have to present it. But it will be only 10, which means five for, for group uh, for case study one and five for case study two. It will be presented on the actual day by the representative that you have chosen, but I would, I should get to know the name of the representative along with the case study that you submit. So I'll be looking at whether the case that 10 case studies have, have got or not, which will be five each. Is this absolutely clear? This is so that, you know, you all had suggested to me in the beginning saying that please don't give us everybody all that amount. But some things were questionnaires, which you have to do individually. That's why they were given to everybody. And that you had to do self-exploration. And there are other thing is that I want you to do as group-wise, as team-wise. Third thing is that I want those groups which have not been act active very, uh, very much to please become active now. Because if you cannot lead 10 people, take it from me. You can't even lead one person yourself. So it is time that you learned leadership. It's already half the course. If I'm not able to teach you leadership, I have failed. And that is the reason why my request to you is, I, I mean, I see Ritesh is smiling because he's in group nine. That is one of the best groups. And also I see other people smile like group seven and others. They are, they are actually taking a lot of uh, interest, you know. But uh, there are uh, some groups which are absolutely dominant. Now, in that, we have chosen the leaders. So leaders can activate, but the representatives are different. The second thing, now some of you had, you know, told me privately that you wanted, uh, you know, on corporate communication because you said everything is there, but we work in the industry, we work in, and there is no corporate communication lecture. Now, again, can I hold this on a Wednesday? See, I'm doing it free. I'm troubling myself. How, what kind of what kind of an idiot can be me who takes on extra work? Yes, yeah. especially during COVID time. I think I would like you know uh, the yes to come on your uh, chat because it will, and then I will ask you a date. Should we do it on a Wednesday, nineteenth? Not the next one. Next to next, hopefully COVID should start peaking up and then start coming down. Yeah, 19th is okay, sir. Sorry, 19th guys. is great. So 19th, same time, 6 to 8. Yeah, absolutely fine. And we will get some people from uh, batch 1 also, like we did last time. 
okay. there'll be great inputs from them yeah yeah no problem yeah great so we'll have it on 19th and we'll have it from 6 to 8 so that is the second uh, thing and the third thing is now you have noticed that everything i'm giving points now <laughs> Apuraji is smiling. I'm telling you, you must be all calling me an idiot now, doing extra work. Nobody does it. No, no, Aswindaji, sir. Aswindaji, when I saw you on my number, no, sir, I felt that this is numbering is a good, good, good step which you have taken, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, now, why, why I'm doing this is so that all of us become accountable. And when we is... become accountable, now, like, I was very surprised. Before the second session started, we had 15, one, five feedbacks already there. So your pictures have to be given by 10th. That is Monday. I am achieving my aim. But if you still don't do it, your group will lose. One thing is there, the group that wins, each one will get a certificate, if not by ICI, by me. I'll try to get it from ICI. But I think getting from me would be a greater honor because um, I'll tell you a story if you give me two minutes. Can I tell you the story? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Aspindaji, I, my question was with the case study. Sir, what exactly expected from the case study? Can you little explain? Little, See, if you can there, there are case questions given within the case study. Uh, you have to answer those case questions in the form of a presentation giving logic why you are saying that. So there are four or five case questions in one of the two case studies. You have to answer those case questions. That's all. But you have to keep the thing in entirety. Now, there may be a situation given. There is not a situation given. And you have to create that situation for yourself. So I read say, that, sir, I read that question and I understood that uh, we need to make a team charter or something like that, similar to that. Absolutely. Or is, it, is, is it not expected or is it only the answering the questions? In team charter, you could give the broad outlines. That's all. You okay. don't have to give, you know, go into extreme details of writing a PhD thesis, but but you can you can give five, seven points, eight, ten points. That's all. Uh -huh. That is why you need to discuss. So you need to have a Zoom meeting for yourself with uh -huh. the group. Get it passed in the group. What are the key things? But before that, people should have read. If they just come for the Zoom meeting, no, no good thing will come out. Usually what I've seen in universities, colleges and other places, but not in military, but in universities and all I've seen, person who's made responsible is made to do it. Thank you. Yes, everybody switches off. But in this case, like in military we do, everybody's contribution is written. How many attended that meeting will be written in that. So I want this case study one and case study two. When you say Zoom meeting held on XYZ date, how many people attended? I want their names. Agreed. See, I am seeing, you know, Abhi, right now there are 74 people left. I'm seeing who are the people who never ever interact in groups. Their videos remain off. I'm noting down their names. Not to do anything, but to someday ask them, why are you fooling yourself by attending this course? Don't do it. I'll give you a certificate. You send me an email saying that I just want to be logged. Please send me a certificate. So then I will tell you, okay, I'll send you the certificate. I'll take the risk and say you attended and I'll send you. But don't fool yourself, please. Because the biggest fool is one who's fooling himself. Agreed, sir. Is it correct or not, sir? So I would, like, I would like you all. Yeah, okay. And I know them. I mean, I've got their names written. See, they take that I am XYZ person. I'm not in a proper dress. I'm a lady. Though, though no lady has done this. Huh? All ladies are attending. Barring one. I can tell you that also. Barring one, all are doing it. And I know her name. But a lot of people say this. That I'm a lady. Why should I be seen? Uh, in the classroom, you hide yourself in a veil or something? No, no. You don't. It is, it is an excuse taken for not you know, attending it properly. Same is with gentlemen. They say, no, no, I, I'm not properly dressed. Why are you not properly dressed? I'm wearing my tie. Would you like it that if I come in t-shirt and take this session? I'm asking you. Please open your mic. Would you like me we, to come in t-shirts, jeans, 
यहाँ से टॉन है I'm just saying, uh, even uh, maybe Daya sir is not there. So usually the top four from auditors like KPMG or EY or Daya sir kind of people when they come to talk to us on different subjects and uh, after seeing the office space and people and everything, they say we feel that we're out of uh, <laughs> here <laughs> because we are a product company and there is no dress code. I mean, see, there are a lot of companies like this now because the. culture i have seen 10 years ago was completely different from the now also and I, i just want to say that well, there are two uh, you are yeah. absolutely right there are two mncs one is the one who come they come apple who come even in shorts t-shirts which are torn even in our office they will come like that yeah but there <laughs> is allowed. another I mean, one not everyone i love it another allowed. one same stature google amazon they will always be in this and the big companies names are known but there are a lot of except the service companies uh, services companies where clients will visit there will not be dress code in the it industry no let us say if somebody comes for you to you for interview and comes with a torn t-shirt I'm not, sure not really see we say a neat attire but not really the, there is no dress yeah, code like you have to it. come in a thing and, uh, and whenever but, a person wears a tie it it reflects that i am on job actually if you come in t-shirt and jeans also we comes for interview to you you may you may be feeling he is taking it too easy there may be a feeling like that with majority of the people i agree maybe in the next 5 years that will be a normal <laughs> okay so we f- kill this by saying only one thing that i would like in the case study 1 and case study 2 all the people who attended the zoom meeting their names to be there ahal ji one one concession is there the person who's not attended the zoom meeting that person can present if that person presents then he is considered to be included <laughs> okay so that that's that how, is that's is how, good that's actually that's how we choose our leader you know amrit <laughs> darshi jai there's a story i was going to tell you i was a young uh, flight lieutenant i was just gone to mic 23 squadron and uh, that time there was a movie vijayata which had come and i used to look like kunal kapoor so they made me And my nickname became Angad, and also my call sign, fighter flying call sign, formation call sign was Vijayta. So they made me the adjutant. And like you all have seen, that time also was like this only, follow up, follow up till things get done. So when I gave a certificate to somebody, that person was a Muslim gentleman, Syed something. I've forgotten his full name now. And then I forgot about it. I was just 25 years, 26 years of age that time. Subsequently, life went on. Let me one thing. Yeah, I came to brigadier rank or air commodore rank, and I was posted in Hyderabad. My wife's passport had to be made. So, as you know, wife's passport has to be made means I went in uniform to the passport office, requested everybody, and when I was requesting everybody, suddenly there was a bearded gentleman, long beard. He comes to me. he says you are not air co- you are not flight lieutenant dahil because then i was air commodore but it struck they struck him as flight lieutenant so i said yes i am i am air commodore dahil he says you were my adjutant i will get you your passport only if you come to my house for lunch so i said fine we got the passport like this there was no problem at all we went to his house in hyderabad for lunch and when we went there in his drawing room he took me and showed me the certificate i had given him was framed and kept there and imagine 20 years after 25 years after i had given him that certificate now my request to you is is not ego talking here but i loved that gentleman unfortunately he died within 4 years after that with heart attack so that's that of the story so request is if nobody can give you certificate i am going to give you certificate for the group which comes first by name to everyone in that group whichever group that comes first that's all sir anything else anybody would like to suggest to me I sir excuse me sir 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 to take sir. the certificate sir uh, after 4 years sir. we don't know what will happen <laughs> you mean <laughs> i'll not be alive after 4 years <laughs> don't worry sir, sir one small request Uh, uh, one small request, sir. Uh, definitely, you are doing a commendable job, and a lot of data is being uh, tracked. Uh, sir, can we get the pending works from each of the groups so that we can follow it up? Uh, 
मे बी दीकेंड वीक और थर्ड वीक स्टेटस इज देयर just if it is not a further strain to you <laughs> what what i'll do is sir i'll send you that presentation to everybody okay no. yeah yes. okay okay they the the already there just share uh, that and it will it will have my all those other good wala slides of the marshals area okay. uh-huh. uh-huh. so uh-huh. so so ritesh want... ritesh ji had told me i told him just give me some time i'll do it later okay yeah. i will aspen ji ek aur thing thoda sa ka yeah no we need to discuss on that internally sir yeah yeah deepa ji uh i just wanted to know the representative should be other than the leader uh, the, that's in what fact, I... in fact the representative should not be the leader or the deputy leader it uh, should be so, somebody else so can i make a request to the uh, members of my group i am a group one leader uh, i have already put a whatsapp in the group who wants to be the representative if uh, <laughs> by tomorrow 11 o'clock or otherwise then i will have to represent one of the member <laughs> yeah it should not be leader and deputy leader it should yeah, be yeah else. yeah so i i request everyone in the group please uh, come up and uh, select yourself as a representative or by tomorrow afternoon i will select the representative otherwise s1 hona padega <laughs> even no, in military uh, even in military we are not this dictatorial aspen ji aspen ji kitna tha sir aapse all vikas on s1 sir can i come in yes sir yes sir please uh, uh, sir a uh, feedback jo last time ka maine feedback dena reh gaya tha mera iska kuch kisi karan se kaam mein tha main तो मैं अभी फीडबैक देना चाहता था लेकिन वो अभी ब्लॉक हो गया तो मैं अभी नहीं देते फीडबैक एक्सेप्ट फर्स्ट वीक का व्हिच आई केप्ट इट ओपन फॉर नियरली 3 वीक्स सेकंड एंड थर्ड वीक आई क्लोज विद इन 2 डेज बिकॉज़ दोस आर द डेडलाइंस सो आई गिव 2 डेज मंडे इवनिंग तक इज द डे व्हेन यू हैव टू गिव द फीडबैक सो इफ इफ सपोज समबडी वांट्स टू गिव यू अ फीडबैक ऑफ देयर ग्रुप 3 इफ कैन इट बी पॉसिबल टू गिव अनदर वन नो टू आई कैन ओपन इट बट व्हाट आई हैव डन इज द फीडबैक इज ऑलरेडी गॉन टू द फैकल्टी आल्सो It, there were no, sixty-six sure. feedbacks, no, so sure. they were already gone to the faculty, and so that they improve themselves with all each word. But one request I have, you know, a lot of times I find personal attack. Uh, that should be avoided. Avoided. Be avoided. You know, you could say the same thing in slightly different words because these people actually prepare a lot, and I've been grilling them like every month's presentation. I've been grilling for nearly one month, okay. and we have had at least three Zoom sessions with every faculty I have. That is why they crypt to you when they come. Agreed, sir. No issue, sir. We uh, will do that, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, any, any? Uh, just one point. Actually, uh, evening sessions are little diff- uh, difficult for me. So, is it possible in the morning if nobody else is uh, uh, having? Uh, uh, Harsha, I think sir, everybody is having the offices, no? So maybe it will be difficult for the of uh, this one. Uh, And and Harsha had another question about video. Now, uh, what what I've been doing is all these people who are coming to you, they are coming free because of my connect with them, and even coming at such low prices for normal sessions. Because when I first contacted a few people who didn't know me, they asked for fifty thousand one lakh rupees each session, whereas they are doing it for just three to five thousand rupees per hour. So, it, you sir, know, when I when I'm calling on Wednesday. Less when I'm than calling on Wednesday, once? when I'm calling on Wednesday, it is completely free. That person is doing just for me. And when he's doing, he or she is doing it completely free. Recording cost I have to pay, and I'm not charging anything from you. So where do I pay recording cost from? You know, I record it, but I am not able to send it for Scrum because any conversion to Scrum. or asking for editing and sending it back to me it costs we have to pay to tcs so if i charge let's say 100 rupees or something then it becomes feasible but i don't want to charge and for that so me, painful sir charge to me i will pay editing charge no problem sir, it's so painful collecting no, for everyone take it that <laughs> i have to give gs fair that you will spend that sir uh, even that fee what we are paying is 100 people session you we paying solo is less than the fresher java training I'm but actually, actually uh, i think what i'll do is she's put up a point let me see if i i, I if i can uh, i'll ask there sir if i can show it as an expenditure to the course itself if i can show it as an expenditure to the course i will do it 
yeah that recording will be very useful sir if it anyway is. sir uh, in the 10th week we will touch base with you you don't have to take the hit of the money see that's not fair sir if that amount has to be given we are ready to share it sir no sir problem. bahal ji bahal sir collection is the problem na no? how will i collect it no sir you don't have to do anything okay you don't, you don't worry about it don't have to do anything on that so bahal sir whether the assignment is taken open? charge now we don't sir, have to worry sir uh, asminder ji asminder uh, ji we actually in, a, in a, our chapter we download we record all the sessions of the csc faculty in zoom only and what we do is we uh, we download the session ourselves and we upload it in the youtube also of ourselves so there is no charge as such so what where the charge sir, comes remember sir i told you the charge is to convert it to edit it and convert it to scom otherwise such a long session there are huge gaps in between i start the session from 1 o'clock uh -huh. so the recording has started from that so all that if you see what what gets downloaded by you when i upload it and i am allowing the download facility as per your suggestion uh -huh. Now you see how how well edited it is, and there is nothing before, nothing in between. All are as a as a scroll down function in the video. So, yeah, if it is like uh, you don't have to edit, if you can provide raw, it would be great. Because I was not able to attend it at all. I tried to, but then I got calls and also. If it is raw, it's time for me. There's other thing also. No, lot lot of things that we talk discuss. I don't want it to be sent. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, there is this sir, issue also. Sir, what also, I want to say is that, uh, sir, sir, even if somebody wants, uh, individually want to be sponsor also, na one or two person, we can sponsor together. Sir. The money is not. No, I mean, no, I'll man, talk sir. to their sir to say that I'll show this uh, expenditure so as proof, and I, I think that, that should uh, solve the problem. Ah, uh, that will solve the problem. Okay, I'll try. Uh, uh, sir, Ashminder ji, hello, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, whether the assignments backlog can be submitted? Yes, sir. By Because I want you to get the certificate, and I'm telling you, I'm very serious. If your backlog of assignments is not given, I will not be giving the certificates. So if you clear it, I will give the certificate, but your group has lost the points. That's the only thing. After the time, there are no points. After the time, there are no points. No points after after the date after nine zero one. This uh, nine group. There was one gentleman who submitted at nine zero four. That person didn't get no points. Their one point got reduced. No, wow. Any any other questions, sir? I'm open to all questions. No, no, that's it. Oh, no, sir. Thanks a lot for your time, sir. There yes, sir there's a question by Nirmit Gupta, sir. For week five assignment, week five assignment. If you can share the list of participant group wise, we can assign the case study to person related to those group only. I think everybody knows. Yeah, it's already groups are there. Already you created a group, and the WhatsApp group is also there. Just to avoid, avoid the confusion, where you can see both the both the assignment assigned to you, so you cannot submit uh, the one. So, like I have been assigned case two, I cannot submit a case one, but it has been assigned to me. So it oh. doesn't matter. Because I am going to look at the five groups as it is not individuals are not giving. I am going to look at ten presentations have come to me, one each from all ten groups. That's all. And once that is done, and you are also certified that all ten attended your Zoom session. For me, it's locked. It's attended. <coughs> so there is no need so for individual you know, person, individual feedback this time. So you have to submit on the Google Classroom this time. This is what you are saying. Google Classroom only, sir. You have to submit. No, sir. And actual day, actual day, you have to present it. No, sir. There will be confusion then because like two assignments are being assigned to me, but I can only submit a presentation for assignment number two because that is being given to me. However, okay. in, in in Google Classroom, it will show for assignment number one as not been submitted by me. No problem, sir. No problem. So I get. You know what I'm saying? I if if that list is with me, I can change it and I can be. Assigned only a case two. This is what I'm. Yeah, he's brilliant. Say. Actually, Nirmit is brilliant. I am not that brilliant. I couldn't understand what you were saying. Now I understood. What he's saying is, if you can send your leaders' name, a representative's name, who are going to give the presentation, if they have submitted, only they submit. If they have submitted, he'll show it as submitted for the group. Ek one clap ho jayegi. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I'm slightly, slightly tube light, sir. Oh, and and uh, this uh, uh, session will not be open for all the members of the group. There is a. No, is. You can up. see your you you can see your case study, but it will be assigned only to the group to the representatives. Okay. Absolutely. And it will be so marked only, for everybody. So only one submission from the group, right? 
जबकि हमारे ग्रुप को एक एक करनी है और ग्रुप में से भी एक बंदे को प्रेजेंट करनी है तो निर्मित जी क्या बोल रहे हैं कि मैं वो दस जो सिर्फ दस इंडिविजुअल्स को असाइन करूंगा कि उनके ट्रैक में जाएगी इसमें and i will send you the list of all the groups list okay. of participants for all the groups i'll send that any any oh. other question any other thing uh-huh. any other thing you would like to do because i still have 5 weeks after this next week <laughs> get it done right so have a very beautiful day keep stay at home make your employees you, stay at home jai hind jai hind sir jai hind jai hind jai hind jai hind Yeah. Thank you. Thanks sir.